Happy Holy Day, Moors, and welcome to House of Reawakening Minds. House of Reawakening Minds exists to provide for exploration and practice of spirituality in an enlightened community dedicated to honoring the myriad of sacred pathways to the universal creator. We are a holistic center for spiritual grounding, free thought, self-discovery, and Moorish science, an awakening experience for all ages. Tonight, as always, we are pleased to present our National Grand Chief Taj Tariq Bey as he presents the seriousness of comprehending jurisdiction. Let's welcome mm. him. Islam. Salam. Asalaamu Alaikum. Miyam Um, I want to discuss again, and uh, we've done this over the last few decades with you all, um, the issue of jurisdiction slash jurisdictions and um, the importance of our people having and be, being presented with a comprehensive, reasonably com comprehensive comprehension uh, and dissertation on the subject matter of jurisdiction. And, uh, and the fact of the matter is, um, the issue of jurisdiction is not discussed enough among our people in so much as the fact that everything that is done in social structure, in governmental principles, in running government, in uh, dealing with uh, rights and liberties, in dealing with rights of property or the lack thereof, in dealing with uh, a challenge uh, or a question or any controversy concerning rights, properties, estates, inheritances, uh, both corporal and incorporal, uh, territories on the aggregate land, uh, rulership on the aggregate land, uh, the exercise of powers um, and um, the matters concerning uh, authority operating on the land or in a political jurisdiction limited on the land and the knowledge of the borders lines both um, aggregate, aggregate and also abstract in relationship to uh, organized government and of course organized society and also with the uh, determinations uh, in relationship to economic interchanges, um, trust systems which operate in government and in everyday affairs of economics in relationship to estates, uh, in relationship to inheritances, etc. And as you all know, these things or matters um, concern us every day in our everyday affairs. However, when you uh, speak to our people in many of these areas uh, of, of concern, you'll find that many of us are inadequate in relationship to comprehending jurisdictions and the importance of it. And also with many not recognizing that it affects every phase of your life in interchanging with other uh, members of the human kindred and families, etc. Uh, so we're going to go over a few things concerning jurisdiction. And those of you, as usual, uh, take pen and, pa and paper and write down some of these things because these are points of reference that you're going to use in um, for tonight and also in the future. And also whenever you're addressing, as an example, uh, any contract, uh, constitution, treaties, uh, recognition of the connections between those instruments and or the lack thereof, um, the uh, identification of parties in controversy in relationship to estates, land grants, uh, land ownership or land claims or jurisdiction or power over land, taxation, the lack of uh, power to tax, the alleged 
or, or claimed authority to tax, etc. Uh, the ones or the, the persons um, who use political jurisdictions and or venues to issue or make claim or command a tax, all of these things um, concern jurisdiction. And you know uh, from probably your own experiences, and we've experienced it over the years, even when pe people begin to do a little study and research, you'll see that uh, there's a, a continuous weakness in the area of comprehending jurisdiction. And as a matter of fact, a lot of the questions politically and economically that affect our people, and that will come up in different conversations relative to jurisprudence, which is the science that treats of positive law in society, period, coming from ancient Canaanite Moabites, i.e., uh, and promoted around the world um, in uh, organized structure by uh, the Moors, etc., which is and are the Asiatic Africans uh, collectively, etc. Although you have specific uh, Moorish jurisdictions, etc., and they will have territorial nomenclatures, etc., that will distinguish the, the territorial provinces and uh, kingdoms, etc., cetera, uh, and uh, having a concept, a proper concept of those jurisdictions uh, will remove a lot of confusion that exists among the people and keep in mind that that lack of knowledge and lack of uh, information in relationship to political jurisdictions, uh, social structure jurisdictions, uh, um, estate jurisdictions, etc., rights and powers and exercises of jurisdiction, etc., is, is um, has been lacking in our community. So I want you to write some of these things down, which I'm going to read to you, and you'll do, uh, say, some research on your own in the future. At the same time, have some references uh, to what we will discuss in general tonight, uh, and then not be necessarily what you call wanting in your comprehension of what jurisdiction is about and the seriousness and importance of it because it operates every day in all your affairs. Jurisdiction in general. So jurisdiction in general. Now this is ancient and modern jurisprudence. Henry Campbell Black's fourth edition Law Dictionary, etc., Deluxe Edition, Jurisdiction. Now, the word jurisdiction is a term of large and comprehensive import and embraces every kind of judicial action. Keep that in mind. I'm going to repeat because you really got to get this down and get this clear in your mind. Jurisdiction is a word and a term of large and comprehensive import and embraces every kind of judicial action. Are we clear? Now, jurisdiction is the authority by which courts and judicial officers take cognizance of and decide cases meaning that's the authority that is used or which is delegated to them under uh, standing or established law that is made, uh, uh, is presented as in a, a term of law, their, their license to act in a limited capacity in relationship to making judgments and decisions in harmony, in harmony with the uh, construct of treaty, constitution, or trust assigned to them with its limited parameters that would be within a construct or what you would call a document of, that may be called a delegation of authority order. It could be called a um, power of attorney uh, in principle, this is what uh, uh, is meant 
when someone claims or is exercising power over another being um, designated as a natural person, because person also means corporation. So when you just say person, they may be, you need to understand jurisdiction because then there's the jurisdiction of the living and then there's the jurisdiction of the dead. Uh, and, and when uh, you have uh, corrupt operators or persons who are claiming jurisdiction and they are aware of the fact that many of the masses do not understand jurisdiction, what they have often done and what they've been doing, and which is also one of the motivations of me bringing this subject matter up, is that they will mix deliberately or transfer the corpse or the dead corporate entities that they may construct under legislative cause or legislative action that may have no relationship whatsoever by obligation or authority to the targeted beings or persons, natural persons, and designate them as dead, i.e. civil or mortus under the guise of a corporate structure, which is has been and is currently the practice at North America. And it has been used constantly and consistently by members of the Circle Church and the Chancery, which you know as the Bar Association or the British Accredited or Registry. Um, and uh, these people are known as um, lawyers and attorneys, etc., cetera, uh, under the Bar Association, which is a foreign, foreign jurisdiction that you must know. Anyone who claims to be a lawyer or an attorney operating on the land at North America under the jurisdiction of Morocco or the jurisdiction of the occupational corporate operation designated as United States Service Trading Company, etc., that jurisdictional power would be designated by virtue of a contract via treaty or constitution. The distinction must always be known by the people because one of the problems that we've been having, particularly with our people who are the Aboriginal people of the land, is that false jurisdictions were created under corporate constructs and imposed upon the people um, who are the living and then they have been declared artificially as dead politically, not physically dead, but politically dead. And then the operators under de facto uh, venues and de facto uh, anti-constitution and anti-treaty corporate entities have been used to steal people's estates, etc and that venue of operations which is uh well entrenched at north america has been disguised under the carlos Linneo's term racism which was generally imposed during the 1735 era on up and has no origin in the ancient world as demonstrated at north america in modern contemporary times and what you recognize is many of the people are not aware of that. And so as soon as, um, and as commonly uh, um, projected among the people, like a psychic attack, and it absolutely is, the, um, the corporate and legacy operations of occupational people who are in fact not Americans, but who have been falsely claiming to be Americans, but who are really members of the Roman Curia under the Spanish Inquisition against the Moors have been claiming to be Americans and have been claiming authority under treaty and constitution and exercising that said authority when no such authority is vested in them or exists with them. On top of the fact that those persons uh, who are claiming to be Americans and particularly white Americans are in fact not Americans and in fact have no green card while they under a color of law 
have practiced imposing green card processes on Aboriginal people of the American continent, North, Central, and South, and the adjoining islands, and for the most part, have not gone challenged because have have gone unchallenged and not sued in international courts or venues, etc., nor injured, um, nor attacked, but submitted to under false pretexts by people from the islands who are Americans, people from South America who are Americans, people from Mexico who are Americans, and people of the North who are Americans who have been calling themselves brand names created under ends legacy operations of the dead called corporate entities, et cetera, which many people commonly refer to as 14th Amendment persons. And I know you've heard those terms, but people need to know what that actually is. And what they, what um, the alien invader, invaders have been doing under the guise of federal government under the guise of state government, and, and, and keep this in mind, write that word down now, it's a very important, under the guise of municipal government, under the guise of being legitimate creatures of constitution and treaty, et cetera, have actually set up a, up a criminal enterprise that has been operating at North America, particularly under the de facto jurisdiction of the United States corporation service company acting as as legitimate when in fact it is a criminal enterprise and is not lawful whatsoever it's not opinion that's fact and um the activities the corruption and the activities that have been practiced and particularly conversions of estates and probates jurisdictions which they have created uh, as an example, probate jurisdictions uh, concerning rights and liberties that have been converted from the living to the dead are demonstrated in what you call Department of Motor Vehicles with registration of vehicles, registration of cars, trucks, etc. And you know and I know that the average person is not aware that those activities are, are actually violations of treaty and violation of constitution law. Well, because people have been have been groomed under de facto governmental operations for so many generations, their concepts are that these instruments that they have been using under the jurisdictional powers of the United States Service Corporation owners is a legitimate lawful creature operations under the Constitution for the United States derived from Muslim law under the treaties, et cetera, which supersede that constitution, but yet that constitution obligates those who claim to be government officials to the treaties, et cetera, via article three of that constitution and article six of that constitution for the United States. And so the issues of jurisdiction, the issue of challenging jurisdiction, uh, the issue of no, uh, of knowing or recognizing when jurisdictional barriers or lines abstract and, and aggregate are crossed or violated needs to be known among our people. And what you will see by training, you'll hear almost every day in different uh, political, social, economic, and intersocial venues, people constantly using this phrase, racism, prejudice racism, prejudice, not knowing that they're actually given a cover word to cover up the organized criminal uh, enterprise known as the U.S. government corporation that they have been trained is a, is a country when it is in fact a private service corporation registered in Austria and also with a branch registered in France, etc. And also um, uh, which has been duplicated um, about four times in actuality uh, with, uh, with what is called corporate secession passed to other corporate entities and owners uh, generationally and uh, outside of that are in fact, in fact, not even truthfully related. But yet because of the word United States being used, uh, the people are not aware 
who, who, who know better, uh, people know who know better usually are not talking, and people who don't know better think that they're discussing a, a company when they're not aware of the fact that they're discussing the operations of a human trafficking trading company, corporation operations that has been going on for a couple of hundred years at North America, and in particularly uh, with the last two of uh, the corporate constructs uh, in violation of treaties and constitution that have been called the United States, one which you're familiar with that was established in uh, 1913 under the um, Ashkenazi operator known as uh, Woodrow Wilson and uh, with uh, uh, some Roman Curia members, members of the Circle Church and the Chancery, which you've been told were lawyers, etc., cetera, um, and members of the board of directors for the Secret Treaty of, of Verona uh, under the authority of the Queen of England, etc., and the Circle Church, etc. And those persons you have been calling, unfortunately, uh, for lack of knowledge of jurisdiction, you've been falsely uh, misled and misrepresented uh, in, in relationship to them. And you have been calling them senators and congressmen and congresswomen, etc. And you've been calling them governors of uh, the states. And you've been calling them uh, representatives of the legislature for the United States Corporation and Company when in actuality, and keep in mind, these people know this, that they are de facto. And de facto in law, it, in layman's terms, you can call it um, impersonators, uh, fraudulent uh, personators, impersonators, substitutes, um, deceivers, uh, maskers, uh, just, but in general, you would call them uh, corporate, corporate artificial, um, persons who are actually exercising de facto authority under a uh, violation of treaties and in, under violation of constitutions and pretending to have authority that they do not have, but nevertheless using that said authority to defraud the people, to rob people of their estates, to put their estates in what is known as jurisdictional probate so write that phrase down. That's what you need to understand that has been used for generations to gentrify certain targeted neighborhoods. And I, you know and I know the issue of gentrification has always been a problem in our communities. And uh, our people have been trained um, under the Black Codes to, to keep talking about racism when that's not what's going on. What you have is jurisdictional probate under a color of law, under a de facto venue of criminal human traffickers who have been getting away with this for decades and decades and decades. And it is a known fact, but people have not challenged them. So we're going over jurisdiction so that you can have some comprehension of what your conversations should be when you're interchanging with these foreigners and aliens who have been getting away with pretending to be Americans for quite some time. In layman's terms, it would be safe for you to just make the distinction, the jurisdictional distinction by putting the parties under these categories. First category of proper person and the true people of the land, i.e. Americans, that would be people of Canaanite Moabite descent sometimes referred to as Phoenicians, etc., cetera, um, um, Moors in general, etc., and in a uh, distinctive, uh, limited format, um, descendants of Druids, which would be Sinde, which is falsely called Indian. So that must be understood so that you'll know who the real Americans are, distinguished from the hybrid heterogeneous hybrid Albions who under color of law and invasion have falsely interjected into history and particularly since the uh, 1800s where they really started reinforcing it, claiming to be Americans, which has become commonly claimed and commonly assumed and commonly presented in uh, law text, 
legal texts, history books, etc., but is absolutely and violently false. And in that area has come much of the economic distress that not only the people of America are feeling, but people around the world, and is at the root of most of your wars that have been taking place, and these are coming under jurisdictional probate. And this is uh, false claims, and most of them are rooted in what you know as the Unum Sanctum operations where the Popes of Rome, which is the representative head, etc., for the hybrid Albions claiming to own the souls, the property, and the lives of every man, woman, and child on the earth, particularly first target being Canaanite Moabite people of Asiatic African descent, commonly known in the history books before the black codes, commonly known as Moors collectively. Now that's the fact. Uh, and this is again when uh, why people who know this information and know the real history operating in the political jurisdictions, particularly at North America, get quite uncomfortable and upset when you bring these facts to the fore, because what it, it will begin to do is um, generate thought and generate a research among the people, and they will begin to start changing their language because what has been happening with our people out of frustration and for lack of remedy and a lack of justice, et cetera, which is commonly argued, you'll see in the uh, different political social venues. The fact of the matter is that the people are declared incompetent because actually they're arguing what is called a guided false argument, arguing racism and prejudice when actually they should be arguing against uh, false jurisdictions and jurisdictional probate, and also violations of territorial jurisdictions, as well as violations of, of in personam jurisdiction, violations of subject matter jurisdiction, and again, so particularly uh, of, of import to you is violation of territorial jurisdiction. And keep in mind, all of these issues of jurisdiction come into play every day. Um, and I'm assuming, but I'm but dealing with people from around the country for years, um, I, I can safely say most of them really still don't get it. And it doesn't mean that um, persons who have uh, assignments of different organizations are not aware of this because they absolutely are um, because of the corruption of the politics and the inbred corruption of organized corporate entities disguised for so many generations as government, they have been assumed to be legitimate. And so even when people are trying to bring remedy and justice to themselves via the alleged creature venues of constitutions and treaties known as courts, consular courts, um, spe courts of special sessions, etc., which are commonly operative around the world the, uh, uh, most of the people, particularly here, were not even aware that the venues that they have been calling courts were actually human trafficking venues and are not lawful courts whatsoever and actually never were, particularly since around 18, no, 1789, about that time. And about thereafter, almost all the courts that have been operating at North America has been under the control of the Circle Church and Chantry of the Bar Association referred to in the Bible as the uh, um, those Sadducees guys mm -hmm. uh, and those who are stealing the widow's pennies, um, those who know the truth and hinder the little ones from coming into the, the knowledge of truth, etc. That is specifically talking in modern in modern terms. You would talk call them members of the Roman Curia. That's a fact. <clears throat> me. And it's important for you to understand jurisdiction so you can make discernment for yourselves, not because we're having this discussion, but because the people need to have the, a fundamental knowledge of these things themselves and be competent in all of their affairs. As an example, when our people in their quest of economic stability, 
as an example, open up um, or uh, uh, apply for what is in their mind and in their mental training, and I quote, mental training, uh, a bank account, as an example. In their training, they're told that they have a bank account, as an example. Um, when they make an application to the bench of the Pope, the bench of the Pope is also referred to as banks. The account that they're under the impression is their own personal account is actually a loan ledger, unsecured loan ledger account to and for the owners of that bench or bank with that person who gives them fiat or any other substance of value being actually a secondary party by decree of conditional withdrawals thereafter, which means that all issuances, as, as an example from a, 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 the natural being going into a bank in the name of an account, is on on the ledger and in legal process an unsecured loan to the bank quote unquote an unsecured loan to the bank so your the account that you thought was yours number one is not secure and you agreed to it but they didn't tell you that you agreed to it it's a loan to them they didn't tell you that it now comes on what is called asset side of their ledgers, which they didn't tell you that. Um, and so now they have created what is known as a colorable jurisdiction and didn't tell you that either. As an example, go ahead. Fractional reserve banking. Is it is a perfect example. In other words, that is the ultimate, that is an ultimate demonstration of fraud, of fraud in relationship to that operation it itself it itself is not um uh what you would call uh, the jurisdictional argument it is a result of the false jurisdiction representation for bringing about a platform by which that fraud can be exercised that's what i'm right, making that clear right because what yes. what it what it does is it allows what they've written into their rules and regular regulations is that they take your money on deposit or your fiat on deposit they loan it out to others they uh, they normally get an interest get with interest and they only have they don't even have the full deposits on hand were you or many to go to the bank and want to make a withdrawal there was a bank run mm -hmm. they don't even have that on deposit because the reason why they don't because it is a fraud in the first instance under a false jurisdiction and a foreign jurisdiction foreign jurisdiction and in violation of the rules and the laws that govern contracts because it's a misrepresentation etc so here we have people who first are lied to and told that they have money, which was also confiscated under uh, alien, foreign, foreign hybrid European jurisdiction under invasion, um, unwelcomed invasion or hostile invasion, commonly known around the world as colonism, um, and then started burning books and altering books and then writing themselves in to the history book claiming to be the people of the land and thus the owners of the land i.e creating a false jurisdiction by which the false paradigm of the alien hybrid europeans being commonly called american when in fact they're not and never were then using that foundation of false information to set up political jurisdictions in violation of the treaties that supersede the constitution that is the source of the 
jurisdictional authority of the seats of operation in political platforms and in legislative platforms and pardon me in judicial platforms and in executive structure platforms that have been operating on the land in territorial jurisdiction exercising political jurisdiction in violation of treaties and constitutions which is the source of the political problems that you're dealing with today including the fact of the introduction of ritual murders on the street by contracted commercial mercenaries known as the gangs of new york who became organized contractors to maintain this fraud that are now known as fraternal order of police operating at north america as a military arm it is actually a military arm and that is a de facto jurisdiction and logically a problem but it is done to preserve the corrupt and false platform of territorial jurisdictional claims as as quote unquote a country when in fact it is an invading body of organized alien foreign jurisdictions operating under corporate operations de facto and bankrupted over and over again as government etc and so you have political jurisdiction violations de facto operations as being legitimate jurisdictions um um they by virtue of their intent of operations you have a constant problem of jurisdictional probate etc this is where they have uh taking uh marriage certificates and bundled them and have been selling them as bonds around the world until they were no longer accepted and then uh most of you who've been doing a little bit of study are familiar with um the uh, alien um the alien hybrid european known as franklin delano roosevelt when their private human trafficking corporation went bankrupt again in 30 in the, in the late 20s and they did house joint resolution 192 73rd congress in session june the 5th of 1933 and he pledged the birth certificates as bonds to back their debt again for the new again next constructed ends legacy united states corporation human trafficking trading company that has been continuing the false venue of pretending to be the country when the country is actually morocco under occupation under the spanish inquisition which is really what's going on. So now you have, again, in personam jurisdiction violations, subject matter jurisdiction violations, constitutional violations, and definitively territorial jurisdiction violations. And I want you to write some of these things down. You, you may not remember all of them at the moment, but I need you to write these things down in relationship to jurisdiction. Get your pens and papers, all right? Now, as an example, in relationship to any claims that are made, like when, uh, say, some alleged person who represents themselves as some municipal officer, they re represent themselves as that, or uh, of a city, as an example, which is also a corporation, um, of a town, etc., and uh, they represent or claim to have authority in your affairs or your your uh, property or taxing you or licensing you and things like that. Um, your counter to that would be called a, an abramment of jurisdiction and that thus um, either uh, uh, in, in its nature, a challenge of the jurisdiction in fact that they must show quo warranto where they had no jurisdiction in the first instance, or if they under a color of operations, which they usually do, seize jurisdiction under a color of law, then that would be in relationship to that in process, although it would be a colored venue, would be called an appellate jurisdiction. Get familiar with these things because they happen every day, is that you need to be aware that they're happening every day. You know, so write these down. 
appellate jurisdiction, concurrent jurisdiction, contentious jurisdiction, coordinate jurisdiction, criminal jurisdiction, excess of jurisdiction, which you've been suffering every day, exclusive jurisdiction, foreign jurisdiction, general jurisdiction, limited jurisdiction, pendant jurisdiction, that's P-E-N-D-E-N-T, pendant jurisdiction, probate jurisdiction, that's very important because it happens to you every day, special jurisdiction, that's a conditional jurisdiction where you may have a diversity of nationality or subject matter uh, or issue of impersonal jurisdiction, whereas uh, a venue may be used by someone claiming a jurisdiction when actually they have no jurisdiction technically, and then they would have to they would have to go back to what you would call treaty or constitutional venues, and that. Uh, uh, Generally, we'd be called a court of special sessions, which we talked about like 30 years ago. We've been teaching you this area for about that time. And uh, in general, the general presentment would be a special jurisdiction. That means the, the, the general jurisdictions that have been operative are incompetent and cannot be exercised. And this is, again, when it comes to averments of jurisdiction or challenging jurisdiction, these things must be well known among our people and they need to stop talking racism. They need to learn and understand that what they're suffering is abridgments of jurisdiction. And therefore, they need to get commonly acquainted with what is actually going on and not what they've been told is going on. It's not the color of their skin. It's jurisdiction. It's not racism. Race is a paradigm set up, particularly by some hybrid Europeans dealing with phenotype and the most commonly well-known is uh, Frederick Johann Blumenbach and you have Carlos Linnaeus, which is the most common one and you're dealing with the 1700s, which is used by the human trafficking trading company known as United States Corporation Company that has been falsely presented to the world in reconstructed history as the country and logically the people don't know that it's actually a foreign corporate jurisdiction when they think it's a country jurisdiction. This is very important. This is why we're going over this. I know many of you already have this information, already know it, but because of the politics that are taking place right now with the world nation states uh, ceasing to buy U.S. Treasury bonds, which were set up in uh, around 1861-62, which is why they altered the con congressional records so that the people don't see a lot of shenanigans that were going on during that time and they set up the treasury bonds uh to build a corporate structure to sell these bonds on the world to the world after um the murder of abraham lincoln and the corruption of the issuance of the emancipation proclamation and also the issue of manumission write that down it's not the subject matter right now but you're gonna to have to have that in the concept of your mind while you're looking at these things. Because the persons who you've been thinking where your congressmen and your senators are dealing with these various issues that I'm talking about right now, every day as they have robbed you blind and created this economic problem that you're suffering from right now, uh, that's, that's hidden behind this COVID-19 uh, argument, et cetera. Uh, that's a fact. And so you're really dealing with jurisdictional issues. And while you're looking at all of these things, look at jurisdiction. Now, so you're dealing with pendant jurisdiction, probate jurisdiction, special jurisdiction, summary jurisdiction, territorial jurisdiction, and voluntary jurisdiction. Now, what they've been doing, uh, the organized criminals have been claiming that um, our people who are the really Aboriginal and indigenous true Americans of the land who was really Africans, etc. They're not people of color. Our, that creates another false jurisdiction. When you hear 
the legal term or phrase people of color that's actually a a creation of an alien non-human artificial jurisdiction and that would be called a voluntary jurisdiction when the people call themselves colored people or people of color not knowing that it means artificial person so that is a legal de a declaration of the beings natural otherwise being natural living divine beings in human flesh being declared as dead or corpse in law and therefore outside of the venues of treaties and constitutions and thus those principles of treaties and constitution that refer to and deal with the estates and liberties of the living does not apply to persons listed as persons of color because that means artificial person a semblance a simulacrum distinguished from that which is real so go in your law book and look up colored and colored persons because we don't need to go into that because we've been in it over this for decades you need to start really understanding what's happening so now they have created a false paradigm and a false jurisdiction and gotten our people through ignorance of not understanding jurisdiction claiming to be people of color thinking it's a badge of honor not knowing they told the world legally that they were legally and in law dead in law that would be listed under what is called voluntary jurisdiction and thus it would be considered in law process of rights and liberties and the states etc consent and then the exercise thereafter would be what you would call jurisdictional probate and so under that jurisdiction operations this is how and why like uh, franklin delano roosevelt and a, a, a lot of these board of directors claiming to be congressmen and senators have been able to float bonds and take finance or uh, energy from the people here and give it to private foreign corporations which are part of the roman curia in other countries and i know you've heard these terms constantly as an example you can go to in many areas around the land at north america and see the poverty um the lack of resources of the people the suffering and yet the people that you thought thought were your congressmen and senators voted to send as an example eight ten fifteen twenty thirty billion dollars to one of their pet project so-called other nations of which 90 percent of them have vestment because they are not really true americans and never were and they've been robbing you systematically and you allow it to happen because you thought that they were sending finances to other countries and putting the debt on you and then calling that debt national debt when they are not nationals they were putting it on the nationals i think right. they actually told the truth because they call it foreign aid of course they do and that's exactly what it is they're foreigners and they're aiding themselves yeah it's of course <laughs> now and this is back to do does when do the people understand jurisdiction because they're telling you what they've done yeah it's just that our people not understanding jurisdiction it doesn't dawn on them that they're telling the people to the face we just robbed you under a color of law and you've consented to it under voluntary jurisdiction why do you think they say with the irs as a as a, as a point of fact now you have another foreign jurisdiction operating on the land in violation of treaty and in violation of constitution and they're saying to you taxes is vo are, are, are voluntary that's voluntary jurisdiction and yet they impose it under a color of law mandatory and will steal your state if you don't give it up voluntarily which is an act of war now you have what foreign alien jurisdictions waging war against the people under the guise of being legitimate government having no delegated authority whatsoever in personam subject matter and particularly territorial and they have been getting away with it and now you're all suffering from this economic blow um the systems that have been used to systematically rob you under the spanish inquisition has gotten so corrupt that it's collapsing the trust of the world um uh, and thus the trade windows of the world 
and also thus the credit windows of the world, which is really what's going on. And uh, unfortunately, many people who should be don't want to discuss these things. But I'm pleased to know you know, that a lot of the youth that are becoming conscious of what's really going on have been brave enough to speak up when a lot of the, pardon me, alleged adults not only won't speak up, but are sorely afraid to even get into the subject matter. Nevertheless, they have um, participated in, and many of them are part of corporate uh, jurisdictional uh, organizations that come under the jurisdictions of many of these de facto corporate state jurisdictions um, and exercise such powers in the name of dealing with the rights of the people, the liberties of the people, etc. when actually they are known and can be proven easily once you understand jurisdiction to be criminal operations and criminal enterprises by people that may look just like you, that you thought were operating properly in jurisdiction when actually they're subdivisions of a criminal operation, i.e. known as the United States Trading Service Company, which is not a country, never was. Now that's the truth. Get over it and learn about jurisdiction. Or was it, I, I was feeling you was going to ask me something else. I, I just wanted to say that a lot of people, like you said, are not aware of the fact that the U.S. Service Corporation is a corporation, not a country, and that the situation that we're undergoing right now is not national, it is global. Because of the tentacles that are more global, we see ourselves as separate, not realizing that yes. we are, we, we will say sometimes that we are under occupation but not realizing that just like we see uh, when the U U.S. would go over to, say, Vietnam or one of these other countries and take up, that's exactly what is going on here. Now, look at the statement that you just made. And this is where uh, understanding jurisdiction, again, comes in important, important um, comprehension becomes important. Um, the training, because it's, it's also a training, the linguistic training of referring to the foreign corporation as person. And so we say the United, the U.S. went there, the U.S. didn't go anywhere. The owners the of the U.S. corporation who are beneficiaries of the human trafficking corporation styled as the U.S. for their own benefit have been exercising war powers in violation of international law in violation of treaties and in violation of constitution to which they are by law to be a creature which they are not on multiple levels can be easily proven not only to be a criminal ent enterprise that doesn't take deep thought but by the rule of law of treaties and constitution is absolutely obvious however again subject matter tonight why is it not on the lips of the people talking about this properly? Why do the people keep calling the U.S. person? Why do they keep, it's like somebody say, the car went over here and ran over my lawn. The car did not run over your lawn. The person who was operating that vehicle by choice, or usually not by accident, Rolled over your lawn because they're pissed off because you wouldn't give them some of your flowers, so they ran over your flowers. Now, you can charge the car all you want to. Now, let the car testify. Can the car testify? Nope. Does the car steer itself? Nope. Uh, who steered the car? Some living man or woman, etc. Um, who has jurisdiction over that car? The operator. Okay. And they're, you, they're sitting behind what is known as a steering wheel, isn't it? aren't they? Yes, they are. So the car did nothing. But when you say that the car did something, you just, again, created a false jurisdiction. This is part of the linguistic corruption that has caused us unknowingly to do what is called voluntary jurisdiction and thus consent, consent to the injury 
that is perpetrated under a color of law. And this is again why uh, uh, over the years, a lot of times people think that we're being picky when we stop them and say, no, stop, know the distinction between the living and the dead. Those are jurisdictions. They absolutely are. And this is why, uh, as an example, you'll see uh, in international law, as an example, for those of you who do a little bit of research, certain uh, arguments that come in international law, some of the recent ones that are very effective and that affect everybody in the in, in commercial world would be the arguments uh, that was brought before the International Court of Law between France and the France of uh, the corporate country uh, and uh, the owners of the United States. Uh, and keep in mind, we won't go into this, but you've heard us talk about this here and there. The United States platform owners lost the case. This has much to do with what we talk about in lesson book 14 and 14A1 years ago in 92, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Um, with uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower, who was CEO of the United States Service Corporation Company at that time in, in 1954 to 1956, relinquished jurisdiction at Morocco, which is the, actually the land, because they made claims on the land under the Unum Sanctum operations, which they've been operating under colonial operations. And when they lost that case to France, who actually had a superior claim, because that's what that that case is really all about and you see people don't talk about that because they don't want people to know that these persons who own the united states corporation company clearly clearly not only by law and right have no jurisdiction over the people they have no jurisdiction to be continuously operating on the land of north america and so you see a lot of the motivations of them creating particularly and exercising and uh, what you call accelerating their operations under a color of law during the, the, the 1954 to 19 or to the 1960 area. And then you recognize uh, if you understand the real politics, what we're telling you jurisdiction, why Dwight D. Eisenhower, when he saw that happening, et cetera, warned the people of the industrial military the Congressional Industrial Military Complex. If you don't understand jurisdiction, that's just some kind of historical statement that you hear and people talk about and not understand what it actually means. And they don't necessarily understand what is the motivation as to why Dwight D. Eisenhower relinquished uh, jurisdiction at Morocco. And now you have the issues of the treaties, et cetera, that people don't want to talk about, et cetera. And this is, um, uh, has much to do of uh, uh, when I did lesson book 14 uh, years ago that I split the books because it was hard enough to get the people even to look at these matters, let's more take these matters seriously. And so I did 14A1, Protocols of Liberty, which uh, at that time we did not just top pub publish with many of you who have a history with us know know about that um but you need to know the motivations behind it so you're really talking about jurisdictions and people are particularly our people really have no idea how far reaching how in depth and how serious this matter is concerning jurisdiction yes go ahead question with regard to this these persons that have jurisdiction, have that jur claim, that claim have. jurisdiction, that claim to have jurisdiction over the land. And uh, I respectfully say this: this is what we must do, and this is part of what we're talking about right now. We've got to start carefully picking our words, and start consciously, consciously, because this is what's been happening. I'm telling you what's happening. And, and and a lot of times when you know over the years you'll see me uh, correct people, and what I recognize that they many times they don't really get the seriousness of why that correction is made because you're having conversations with people that are working towards fixing these things. And it's sort of like getting someone to put a filter on a dirty water source 
and discussing the filter and why they put it on there and then defecating it in the in in the in the water after it comes through the filter. And they don't recognize that they just did that. And that would be called voluntary jurisdiction and thus consent. This is why you hear very often of uh, uh, politicians who know about the corruption or the potential of corruption say they'll make this statement. People get the government they deserve. What he's saying is that they're the people, so whether there's ignorance or whether they're traitors at heart, are voluntary, given voluntary jurisdiction to a corrupt and non-jurisdictional party who is exercising de facto venues under the guise of government and thus are consenting to their enslavement while turning around then starting organizations and marching all over the place making fools of themselves not getting justice because they, they it hasn't dawned on them that they're dealing with a totally de facto platform that has no lawful jurisdiction whatsoever but they keep volunteering into the false jurisdiction their estates and their property immediately goes into probate because they then turn around and refer to themselves as persons of color which takes them out of the political platforms of civilized government and they've just declared that they're artificial persons and therefore the occupiers are using their artificial person corporation in first person to the persons who now are artificial as first persons and are claiming jurisdictional authority over them as an estate this is what reversion of a state actually is and this is the basis on how they've been actually gentrifying communities and they've been doing it constantly and rather than our people talk about and study jurisdiction they will follow the training line and this is the training line for rats and imbeciles racism prejudice in our communities and and as soon as they go there now they're back into the hands of Carlos Linnaeus and the U.S. Census Bureau for stock. Because they just agreed to be stock in the U.S. corporation, which is a corporation, not a country. Now they are stock and now the owners of the stock can create new bonds and issue new bonds. So I guarantee you they're going to be looking for new stock and putting a census out under the Carlos Linnaeus paradigm of race and the people who don't understand jurisdiction are going to sign those instruments and perpetrate fraud against themselves and then start complaining again because they don't understand jurisdiction. Now, that's a fact. So how do we get out from under that jurisdiction? Now, it's called abramen of jurisdiction. So now you're talking about I'm going to be back to, I told people, write these things down, territorial jurisdiction. If you ask the people listening now, and many people who have been taking our people and taking finance from them and organizing institutions and marching them around on the land, complaining about due process and complaining about justice and arguing racism, um, if you ask them what is territorial jurisdiction, how many of them will give you a clear definitive and competent answer because that's part of what they're dealing with how many of them will deal with in personum jurisdiction because that's what they're dealing with and how many of them will will deal or address to these people subject matter jurisdiction because exactly what they're dealing with all of those things and then you're dealing with the problem of voluntary jurisdiction dealing with misrepresentation and non-consent and these people's rights and liberties are in probate while they're marching and praying all over the place. And it is a known fact what I'm saying. I'm not talking opinion. This is known fact. And then they believe that these people who are marching them all over the, over the place are um, jurisdictionally competent. Um, I don't condemn them. I will say, let the people learn what jurisdiction is and the people themselves will start straightening this stuff up. But if they insist on playing this game of race and color games and prejudice and marching around a place, making themselves fools 
and don't understand jurisdiction because when they do that, they're in a false foreign alien jurisdiction. And keep in mind, foreign in law does not mean distance in the aggregate format. And most people think it means distance aggregate distance geographically and that is an aspect of foreign but that is not political jurisdiction foreign and people need to know this because that's what's been going on really really it, and the interesting thing is what we're talking about right now is is really not unknown it is clearly known and those who are violating you every day in the name of racism and in the name of courts and in the name of city operatives and in the names of the gangs of New York pretending to be officers of law calling themselves um, their, re their most recent operations of being commercial mercenaries known as the Fraternal Order of Police, etc., are knowingly knowingly operating in a politically foreign jurisdiction and that they themselves are foreign by law, by law foreign, and foreign to the constitution that granted them no jurisdictional powers whatsoever and the treaties that supersede the constitution that disallows such activities on the land and against the people. And no one's been challenging it. They've been sitting around talking the uh, controlled argument, race, oh, they're racist. Oh, they took our sandwiches and stuff. Oh, uh, they won't give us a peanut butter sandwich with jelly on it like they gave everybody else. Let us march and let us pray. And they start that. And of course, at that point, they're voluntarily volunteering into a false jurisdiction, a foreign jurisdiction, abandoning the platforms of treaties and constitutions which were in place to protect them and secure their rights in these matters and they now volunteer themselves under a color of law and under ignorance into a foreign jurisdiction and now again they are stock of the corporate operatives of the united states corporate company which is a foreign jurisdiction and it and the operatives of it are in breach of constitution and treaty because they're not a party to it nor are people of color because they're off the platform of civilized organized government why the constitution for the united states is derived from muslim law and it's derived from the treaties the mother treaty commonly known as the treaty of peace and friendship treaty of uh, uh, um, algiers uh, uh, the treaty of tripoli etc and these collectively are known as the Treaty of Peace and Friendship of, with the Moroccan Empire and Great Britain. And the United States Corporation Company is a subdivisional corporate entity, colony, business of Great Britain and not a country. And those such persons who own it have been in rebellion, etc., against Britain. Therefore, they are de facto on multiple levels. However, what they have done have entrenched themselves and create a what you call a private art uh, uh, military arsenal operations and this is why they have corporate um what they call military bases in roughly around 189 countries around the world to maintain the false pretext and the false platform of these false jurisdictions and this is the common source of the world's problems today not that there aren't other problems coming from other political jurisdictions but that is in fact what the source of your economic social and political problems are right now and your jurisdictional problems in relationship to a lack of due process a lack of justice you'll hear our people constantly talking about no no justice no peace yet they will not acknowledge the treaties and the constitutions that were set in place on their behalf by their forefathers who are Moors, and they would prefer to call themselves Negroes, Blacks, and Coloreds, which are brand systems of the owners of the United States Service Corporation Company under colonial operations. Those things that I just stated are provable facts and thus come under what is called consent via 
voluntary jurisdiction and thus are taken outside of the human family nor the, and of the protections of international law because they themselves deny nationality, thus deny national laws and international laws that were put in place to secure their rights, not give them rights. And so now what we're dealing with is a whole body of people operating under false jurisdictions. All of their estates, their rights and their liberties are in probate jurisdiction without their knowledge of it. And they're arguing skin complexion and racism, which is a paradigm set up by Frederick Johann Blumenbach and Carlos Linnaeus and used in the U.S. corporation tra human trafficking venue census, et cetera. That's a fact. I have some questions. I'm going to take some questions. Go ahead. Um, here's a, a question. Is there another power that can challenge them, and I guess it says, and is willing to, a nation that is under treaty, i.e. an ally. Well, it, of course, that's what you're supposed to do. To now, so now, now, here we go, jurisdiction. So now, yes, you're correct in the question. The question is valid. Now, name the parties in treaty specifically. And if you start talking about people of color, you're already, you can, by law, you can't even open your mouth because it wouldn't concern you. Now, name the nation states name the treaties and then name the sections of the treaties that are in breach or violation that's where you begin that's the power but i'm presenting this to you and this question to you have you been seeing the so-called persons of color leader guys having this kind of conversation in relationship to jurisdiction in relationship to enforcing the treaties because that's the venue though that's the jurisdiction that the, the arguments are made when when abridgments of people's rights and liberties are, are concerned, when due process of law is concerned, when justice is executed under law is concerned, you're talking political jurisdictions. Why are they not talking jurisdiction? Well, you can determine yourself after you do a little bit of study whether or not they've been honest with you or, or whether or not uh, some of these people you've trusted are actually compromised extremely. Okay. Subject matter jurisdiction. It's a reminder. Now, those of you who've been listening, I trust that you wrote down some of the aspects of jurisdiction that we presented to you because it's very important. And some of the questions that might arise with you will be, you'll answer them yourselves, truthfully, once you start analyzing. And but uh, 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 of import at the moment, uh, the people need to understand that all estates, etc. And this is particular with those who have been recently arguing the issue of birth certificates, claiming the birth, this type of thing. Uh, what you have is the operations of the foreign uh, de facto operatives of the United States Service Corporation doing actually doing human trafficking and then claiming jurisdiction aggregate um uh territorial jurisdiction which doesn't exist with them and judicial jurisdiction which doesn't exist with them and exercising power of what is known as eminent domain by claiming people's estates and property which would be called probate and so that now you're dealing with probate jurisdiction those those are on the immediate term the subject matters that you're dealing with you're not dealing with racism you're dealing with political jurisdictions. Yes, you are. Um, question. Go ahead. Um, Addie Simmons, what's the end game during and after the Trump administration for Moors? Well, what you see right now, uh, and I've told people for the last three or four years since uh, Donald J. Trump, you know, took the... Uh, um, took the position uh, with the with the bankrupt United States Corporation uh, Human Trafficking Corporation company uh, with the promise of uh, the quote that you hear him say making America great again now so now you must uh, be cognizant of what is America and then what is United States Service Corporation which are two distinctions 
So now that's a that's a commitment in relationship to the corporate activity on the land of America. Now you're going to have to make in in your, both your mind and in your political speech and speaking a distinction between America and the United States corporation company that the people have been falsely back to our beginning of our conversation owners have been caught falsely claiming to be americans you're not talking about the same thing now donald j trump is as we talked and told the people three years ago um put in place by some of uh, military operatives uh, of the defunct united states Cor service corporation company um, who've been trying to restore the Republic platform of governance under a treaty and constitution established, operated at North America, which actually have been overthrown. And by uh, uh, one of the methodologies by which the owners of the criminal out um, enterprise known as the United States has been operating to the point that not only have they been raping and murdering people around the world, they start murdering the people of the land and stealing their property. And to the point that now many of the uh, hybrid Europeans who have been for decades and the last couple centuries, the beneficiaries of the reconstruction of the history at and on the land jurisdiction of North America and, uh, and, and, and have uh, gone along with the false paradigm now knowing and noticing that they've been losing their estates and their jobs and uh, their accounts etc you'll see and will be seeing more of them tell the truth however they're still for the most part uh claiming having claims or jurisdictional claims on estates or the source from which their estates were evolved by profit on estates that were not and are not and never were theirs in the first instance upon which their wealth was built. So their wealth was built under false pretexts in the first instance. And this is back to people understanding jurisdiction. Now, in relationship to starting to fix this thing, we're going to have to start talking the original, that's another phrase, original jurisdictions. So now you're talking about natural persons, natural people, distinguished from artificial persons and then now you're talking about estates reversion of estates and trust this is the area that you're going to be making your discussions and your research when you're talking about remedies in this area and when you're talking about exercising powers or what you would be saying uh what other powers now you're talking in jurisdiction because jurisdiction in law actually means power or the power to act. And so you need to understand the synonyms of jurisdiction, et cetera. And this is why over the years, we've taken multiple opportunities at different times to express the issue of reversion of a state, of uh, trust, because everything is operating in trust and in contract law, et cetera. But what you have, the problem that you have is you have a de facto criminal enterprise operations of criminal foreign persons claiming to be Americans who have entrenched themselves and have actually been attacking the people. This is what's going on. And back to Donald Trump. Donald Trump's assignment, one of his assignments, is and assignments in this relationship to restore the credibility of legitimate governing operations, even though it was already abandoned, you get the point, uh, of, of the defunct United States Republic, the original uh, Republic under treaty and constitution distinguished from the US corporate operatives of human trafficking and those platforms, which have been in operation since 62, 1862. That's just simply the fact. And their official, which we've told you over and over again, most of you know, this is for those who don't know, to give you references so that you can examine some of the things that we're saying and refine your view on what we're saying and make yourself uh, more competent. So now you're dealing with what we've told you continuously over and over again. 
the organic act of Congress, February the 2nd, 1871. And this is important for you to understand because they created another foreign jurisdiction, but they also named it the United States. You know, and people don't know that these are actually different corporate entities and, and three of them are all de facto. And which is another a reason uh, why the um, imposter, impostering uh, persons uh, who, are, who are actually vested um, members of the Roman Curia and um, board, are actually on board of directors and members of the Circle Church and Chancery, which you have been calling congressmen and senators, etc. And uh, you'll notice that they will never bring up the subject matter in the Constitution for the United States of the nobility clause, clause and also the fact that persons of the Circle Church and Chancery by law were never to hold office under the, the legitimate Republic operations of the United States of America, Republic operating under treaty law, and that's the basis of their legitimacy. You will never hear them talking about that. And you'll never hear persons call themselves people of color who are who have been pretending uh, to love people of African descent, Asiatic Africans who have been abused under the Spanish Inquisition and pretend that they're arguing their rights, you will see them always, 90% of the time, bring up 14th Amendment civil rights persons not knowing that that's actually corporate stock. They know it is, but I'm saying that the people have not been aware that that's corporate stock for the United States Corporation Company. Of course, logically, ultimately, they get no remedy and they get no justice because it wasn't structured for that. It was structured to deceive. And again, here we go again, the importance of comprehending really jurisdiction. And it can't be emphasized enough. However, I also know that if, if, if we could get a, more people, because we know a lot of you out there have been studying over the years, but we've also been experiencing opposition from people on our side of the nation who should have actually been teaching the people this. Um, who, for whatever reason, and I'm not condemning them, they made their choices to hide this information, to attack those persons like myself who've been teaching people civics, um, who did not want this information out, who have corporate construct um, jurisdictional issues themselves called 501c3s, um, corporate uh, entities, uh, corporately uh, registered under the corporate municipals, uh, corporations and the municipal states, all of which they are known to be de facto. Uh, and logically, what happens is that the people's estates go automatically into probate jurisdiction. And of course, then the persons who own the corporate states, etc., operations have been stealing their property their accounts, their lands, their houses, et cetera, and gentrifying their communities under probate jurisdiction. Now that is the truth. So I'm saying that to say this, uh, um, the, we need to and there's other information that logically will accompany this information. We need to, to do as much as we can to get our people, people civically cognizant and civically competent so that we can start addressing, exercising power that you already have, that you have not been using um, to counter or what you call make agreement or uh, agreement claims against the false claims of jurisdiction, because keep, the, keep this in mind when you're looking at House Joint Resolution 192, et cetera, and the things that took place even with Woodrow Wilson in 1913, is that they created a false foreign jurisdiction, gave it the air of legitimacy, created false, fine, false or counterfeit, and they have been calling it money, 
in violation of the Constitution and actually created false foreign alien jurisdictions for these private commercial instruments, et cetera, and then use color of law to enforce them. And that's what you're suffering from. You're not suffering from racism. You're suffering from color of law and the assumed jurisdiction in foreign jurisdictions and all property thereafter of persons who agree to be colored come under what is known as jurisdictional probate, which is what's been happening. And of course, they use that as a basis to falsely exercise power called eminent domain, which can only be done by nationals and is actually done by persons who own foreign corporations who are foreign corporate entities themselves, and they have been exercising jurisdictional powers over the peoples of physical persons, over the subject matters, and over the territories of the land. And the persons who've been marching our people around will not tell them the truth that that's where their problem is. They'll start talking about skin color, which is another false jurisdiction. It's what it is. Don't get mad, get wise. And I'm not attacking your marching, praying leader guide, so don't don't go there. Let the knowledge expose them for who they really are. But I bet you they're not poor. I bet you they got trusts unbeknownst to you. I bet you they got multi, so-called multi-million dollar planes to go all around the place to keep promoting what they themselves know is a fraud. And they use different versions of gods to do it. Whatever version, what what flavor god you into? Which which one of the other gods? That's really the other god. That's the real god of the other god that you're talking about. That's the real one. That's whose jurisdiction you're claiming to be under. This is what's going on. And that's not an insult. I'm just telling you the truth. And you need to start facing the truth that we collectively have. Um, uh demonstrated severe severe violence violently severe incompetence to our injury in the process so some questions Now, while Dr. Nayula is reading some of the questions, I'm going to go over jurisdiction of subject matter as an example. So jurisdiction of subject matter means jurisdiction of the class of cases to which particular cases belong. And so whenever there's different subject matters, whether you're dealing with the state, land, trust, all these things are always in operation, etc. The subject matter would be the classification of the cases either litigated or in litigation based on national and international law, i.e. treaties and international intercourse and interchange, etc., by which these things can be settled. And thus, averments of jurisdictions and quo warrantos are common in order for these things to be resolved. This is why those of you who have any basic knowledge of organized government and civilization and jurisprudence know that person, pardon me, per person or people who do not have a nationality who have been stripped of their nationality are not afforded proper venue by which to argue their issues in the, or their cases. Uh, because 90% of them do not understand jurisdiction and therefore are tagged already as minority or or incompetent and then of course they put them in the foreign jurisdiction under a representative of the roman curia via the foreign jurisdiction of the barristers british uh, accredited registry bar association in violation of treaty and in violation of constitution for the united states and thus being officers of the private foreign courts of the circle church and chancery take leave over the people's estates and then deliver them to the states and then by eminent domain claim sovereign jurisdiction over their property 
and thus gentrified, targeted neighborhoods. That what I just told you is how it's done and why it's done. Examine it and you'll see for yourself. And I guarantee you, after you do some serious examination, if you continue to follow people, keep talking about marching and praying all over the place and talking about racism, then you all are choosing a position that I guarantee will not come out in your best interest and continue the pattern of insanity that's been going on for quite a few generations with no resolution and no justice. Because you can't talk about justice or judicial process without talking jurisdiction. That's a fact. Now, was you uh, there was the, a question that you were looking at, Dr. Um, so yeah, I'm just kind of going through and trying to okay. Um, so I wanted to know how you feel about the, the, the funding of the policy enforcers. Uh, and I, missed, I saw that. Um, I would take a position not how I feel about it, but I'll make a statement on it. Okay, the um. The persons that, that are known as policy enforcers that some people have been calling them are, are members. So let's talk. One of the things that when we talk about jurisdiction, we need to start talking about proper person and proper uh, uh, terms of who and what you're talking about. So when they're talking about policy enforcers, they're actually talking about an organized body of for profit sometimes calling themselves not-for-profit religious organization and a political platform known as the fraternal order of police who are actually commercial mercenaries in contract with the subdivisional franchisees of the united states service corporation company which is bankrupt to enforce unum sanctum policies against the people of the land under occupational international occupational forces um and have been falsely calling themselves law officers and are not sanctioned by treaty nor by constitution to operate on the land now you answer the question for yourself so from a standpoint of they should have never been funded we in the should have our not by law they shouldn't the have been sharifs are the of course that's why they don't talk about sharifs or sharifian law which is constitutional law, you know? So, I mean, this stuff is not hard to research, but you, you know, once you start thinking for yourself, you can see the corruption and the deal of it, but while discussing it, we need to be cognizant of the ju di different jurisdictions that arise within the structure of the conversations relative to people's rights, their liberties, their estates and their trusts and understand that all operations in government are come under trust law too. The treaties come under trust law. Constitution comes under trust law. Why is it that these people who are in these positions of trust, they're claiming positions. See now, you wanna understand jurisdiction again. There are some people who are in position of trust who are legitimate, problem, the majority of them are illegitimately claiming jurisdictional powers that not only don't belong to them, were never vested in them. And it has not been in their interest to tell the truth. This is, again, why some of the criminal operators have a problem. And this is back to the question earlier with Donald J. Trump. If you understand trust law, and you understand treaties and constitutional principles and jurisdiction that involve every one of them, you would not be caught up in prejudice arguments, stupid arguments, pro or con concerning Donald Trump, but you'd be simply looking at the facts and recognize that in principle, you, you know, you take it all with a grain of salt, but in principles of law, in fact, Donald Trump is better than the entire membership of the democratic party of the nice of columbus ku klux klan wrapped together in a royal package of doo-doo dung with ribbons now that's not what's being we know that displayed that's and promoted by the msm B and all of you know everything the b the blm the antifa and all of these things that are trying to get us to it's indicative that 
they're doing that and and that again like i said the before, entertainment world and you know, all of the yeah. media and all everybody. i'll say this i'll say this and and this is why you have to qualify because people are, are ignorant of jurisdiction and and i always have to qualify and i say i'm not defending donald trump i will present the facts and let you see them for yourselves however if people don't understand jurisdiction which they've been demonstrating yep they've been following the mainstream narrative to their against their own interest and don't know it that they're voluntarily voluntarily creating voluntary jurisdictions that were actually they were led into deceptively who is they our people particularly that's the Aboriginal people of the land, most of whom don't know that they're Aboriginal to the land, which is a, also a mental political jurisdiction that's operative. And this is back to solutions. You get no solutions and you get no justice, no remedy with the people who are claiming to have or requesting or commanding or demanding a preservation of rights when they don't know or comprehend jurisdictional issues when they're arguing the nature of jurisdictional issues without knowing that that's what they're arguing and then they contradict what they themselves are asking for or asking to address when they mix it with another false jurisdiction within the venue of that argument not knowing what they're talking about talking from an emotional perspective rather than the facts so if they're not if they don't if they don't understand in personam jurisdiction they're not going to operate from that position nine times out of ten their words are going to contradict their requests are going to contradict they're going to fail to exercise a right because they will know that they have a right then they would uh give leave to an enemy of their rights through the barristers association in the quest for claiming a right which indicates their leader guys have not been teaching jurisdiction now that's correct because if they understood jurisdiction which we're trying to address and this is minimal um a lot of the questions that are asked really were already answered uh and these people would answer themselves but i guarantee you this too uh, a lot less time would be wasted on what you call circular motions of people going around in circles trying to solve problems because because they will discover for themselves that their concepts are wrong. No question. Um, Yusuf Seven says, Islam grants you Islam. through all your years of being in the movement. What are some of the things that you've seen that has yielded what the prophet was bringing back, i.e. lifting up humanity, civics, ECT, ETC? Um, let's look at the questionnaire. When he said, how did the prophet begin to uplift the Moorish Americans answer by teaching them to be themselves. Now, when you say that, then you do some research. You also made this statement continuously. Go back to that state of mind of your ancient mothers and fathers. When you do, you will discover that organized government known as civics were actually taught to the rest of the world by the Moors, your forefathers. And those fundamental rules that many of you have accredited to others or actually your own organized governmental sciences, etc. And once you understand jurisdiction, you would understand what Jur Ali was saying. And you would also understand and comprehend why um, and what was the nature uh, of why was, and this would be a question and also a statement for you to consider in relationship to your question. Do you notice how like, uh, in the Moorish uh, Holy Temple of Science, in the Moorish Science Temple of America, or the, and the old Canaanite temple, when you know the real history of the Moorish divine and national movement under the um, guidance of uh, the illustrious prophet Nobudrali, he would mention Marcus Mosaic Garvey, and um, he would be called Mar uh, uh, Garvey, would be referred to as the uh, forerunner. And often you would hear um, people even refer to uh, people in the Garvey movement and also in 
uh, people who are part of the operations of the uh, Moorish Holy Temple of Science that will be referred to loosely as Barbieites. And so this is a fact, do some research. And so then you'll recognize when you do research that uh, the Moorish Holy Temple of Science uh, was registered as a civic organization. And what you'll see a lot of people uh, among whom these questions might arise will never state that fact to the people because they don't want them to look at civics and recognize that uh, there's been some breaches along the way as to why even these questions that should have been answered decades ago are asked today, which they should be asked because they would be self-evident. And you would see that the people would be recognizing um, that these were political jurisdictions that were constructed in order to execute and to propagate a uh, fundamental principled information that was needed and necessary for the people to be uplifted socially, economically, and politically. And you'll see uh, also, for those of you who, who have done some research, you will see that the prophet, Nobudwali, made this statement along this line. And then you can examine that statement and then examine your question and also examine my response to that question. He says, if you don't believe that the programs that I have for the redemption of my people and the citizens are, citizens are correct, go to those who know law. Examine what I just said, then go back to your question, then go back to some of the things I've been telling you right now, and you will answer your own question. Plus, you'll answer it for a lot of other people. He's also asking what you've seen over your years of, you know, that, that what is, I that see is, that is to, to what address I see, what the prophet This said. is what I see. I see the resistance or what you call. Matter of fact, if you go back before you go there, mm -hmm. you know, you, you've seen so you, there was a time when you talk about you were able to send people over to uh, with your yeah. signature and yes. get things changed and yes, so forth. And quite a few and years. And so forth. From, from that point when you were doing that to where we are now with all this, I mean, it, how that, did you get to that point where there was an acceptance? Since, number one, of, sincerity of and yeah. organized activity. That's what, that's, that's what did it. Say that that again, was mainly please. Grace Hill. Sincer sincer sincerity and, and organized activities. Hmm. And of course, instructions, not unlike what we do at the House of Reawakening Minds on multiple levels, which comprises more science. It's not, you know, people's concept of more sciences has been constricted. You know, um, uh, so with, when they're looking at more science, a lot of people, it doesn't dawn on that it's metaphysics. Right. It doesn't dawn on that it's Reiki. It doesn't dawn on that it's proper eating. It doesn't dawn on them as cosmology. It doesn't dawn on them that it's uh, liberal arts. It doesn't dawn on them that it's etymology. It doesn't dawn on that it's epistemology. It doesn't uh, dawn on them that it's philology. It doesn't dawn on them that it's um, architecture. Um, so, because uh, they've been told that it's a religious prayer. And so the mind is constricted. But more science is actually cosmological science, a knowledge of the elements of the earth, knowledge of the plant life, a knowledge of metrology, how cities on the earth plane is laid out based on the stars, which are cosmological, even all the symbolisms, et cetera, all the activation of the uh, glandular system of the body, the evolutionary development and activation of these systems that also have a reflective, what would people would call ethereal level, that also is kind of falsely referred to as a spiritual level. You know, uh, that's more science. And we could go on and on and on. But most, many of the people keep thinking that it's a belief system. And I understand because that's the way many people have falsely presented. But again, I, and, I'll, and I'll say this again, if we, can, if we, just like the prophet said, the prophet said in relationship to this morals, he says, if I could just get you all thinking again, you would save yourselves. Um, the subject matter of jurisdiction is to try to again, and this is redundant, to get our people thinking because most of the questions that rightfully arise and have a ribbon risen rightfully would be self-evident answer 
Um, and it's sort of like um, one, until one begins to really study the different aspects of life and organized government, you know, like, pardon me, you can't appreciate it till you see it for yourself. Mm -hmm. And this is, a, an, again, why I brought up the subject of jurisprudence and, uh, pardon me, uh, jurisdiction, because I recognize I, and know that it, it affects every part of our lives. And it's a broad import, but yet you'll see um, so many uh, areas where uh, people who have been erudite in many disciplines have come on different venues, and particularly in these late years, uh, and is becoming known around the world, you know, because you already know you have fan base right. in China, uh, Japan, Honduras, Ecuador, um, what it came, uh, Dominica, IET, etc., and uh, the UK, you know, Canon land, Canada, Canada. So we have, you know, you know that there, there are people that's in other nation Absolutely. states and jurisdictions that are listening. Uh, and this has been, um, it's become meaning that the Even House of the Reawakening, yes, the, uh, the um, House of Reawakening Minds has become known around the world for bringing different people on, not constricting in some kind of tunnel vision venue, and in the process is liberating the people. Those principles, just and not unlike what the prophet said, go back to those principles of your ancient mothers and fathers. He says, I've given you more than enough to save yourselves. Now go out and redeem your people. And um, all of us are always coming short. We're trying, but we come short. But I will honestly say this, and it's not with bias, it's only with truth. I'm just grateful to be a part of the House of Reawakening Minds, which has proven over the years to be a venue where free thought is not constricted so that people with broad minds, thinkers, researchers, scholars, true doctors, which means teachers, really, in the dis different disciplines of more science, because more science is actually organized civil government as well as spiritual instruction. All of it's together in more science in cosmology. Um, including the fact that there's people been reaching out to you from many venues uh, who, who would not even think about going to other venues that many of us have been involved in, knowing that those venues are constricted. Right. I'm saying, um, and this is not in defense of, it's just being honest. The House of Reawakening Minds, for me, in, in, in real analysis, represents uh, the nature of free thought venue that is needed to help uplift the people because you cannot restrict thinking if you're going to liberate the people. You cannot constrict people thinking if you're going to have people evolve mentally and thus spiritually. You cannot be restrictive. You've got to be open-minded. You've got to have the multiple levels of information available to the people in all the disciplines that 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 affect the human condition and with all due respect the house of we awakening minds with all of our shortcomings and flaws has at least met that grade and i ain't patting you on the back i'm just telling you the truth it's not it's, it's, it's all all the people that do that so i appreciate you we appreciate you because you've been a integral integral rather and very foundational part of what is going on here. So much respect to you. Um, let me see if there are any more questions. The bank, okay. The bank of, uh, um, someone wants to know, let me pull this up. The bank of Atmarian, can you speak on the bank and give us some information on how things are going to be done? If you would, thank you. First, with the question, present the aspects of the Bank of Atmari that they're making reference to. You asking me? Yes, I'm, I'm for the person who's asking that question. You, can you speak on the, uh, I guess they're just asking you, asking if you could explain what it is and 
and what it means, I guess, to our people. I mean, I've seen some things with it with regard to the brother that transitioned. Yeah, we, 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 we know. Yes, it's yeah. real. Yeah. So I'm uh, speaking, but I don't Uriel, know. Uriel. Uriel has come to our car classes in New York. Right. Now, of course, you already know this is what, what would be considered in law and in law and legitimacy a legitimate banking operation by true Americans. Okay. Now, if you want to look at the details on any activity that uh, would would be presented to the people, then you would measure by aspects of uh, Moorish history, whether they're dealing with the cosmological nature of the true culture, dealing with gold, silver, true commerce, etc., mm -hmm. or whether or not we would be dealing with a conditional compromission knowing that we're under political occupation by the Jesuit order in these jurisdictions, which we're, we're again, we're talking jurisdiction. And then you would answer that question yourself. I mean, there are others that I know are, have tried and or are trying. Which all of us are doing on multiple Yeah, levels. to do various and sundry. And now, and this is very important because that you're really put, now this is important and the question is important because now it necessitates us in the quest for correcting and bringing justice and honor and integrity back into the social political platforms you're dealing with jurisdictions. Because now we also know that while we're in transition, and these are things that are happening also with Donald Trump, et cetera, um, which we told about for the last five to seven years telling people that the nations of the earth were going to stop buying U.S. Treasury yeah, bonds, I can attest and to that. that you that you're going to have a feedback loop, and we're telling people to take their fiat, mm -hmm. not their money. They don't have money. They need to. This is back to why we did the fiat, you know, issue. We have to get our people really understanding jurisdiction, because there you have aggregate, and then you have abstract. As an example. People get into the discussion of banking, um, then not understanding really the jurisdiction of the fact that they themselves are a bank. Yeah, because you could. No, but I'm just saying, you know, really comprehending that. You can say that and you hear people repeat that. But if you ask them to put on paper the explanation of it, you would they would have to show you beginnings, endings, limitations, and issues of jurisdiction. Because now you have limits of jurisdiction because you're interchanging with other people who also have entities that have instrumentalities that cross jurisdictions. And all of them are mixed between valid and invalid. And as a matter of fact, most of all, most of anything that's even valid in law are more recent activities with people who are buying and selling, or what you would call it, trading for silver and gold. Fact, aggregate silver and gold, and or dealing with specified jurisdictional instrumentality that have actually numerical reference in exchange for gold and silver coinage etc which is by law the money now when you get out of that jurisdiction now you're getting into what has been the problem and that is private commercial paper who people, even in the name of consciousness, keep calling money and they just corrupted the whole argument. They don't, un here we go. Why are we doing this? They continue to demonstrate that they don't understand jurisdiction. And all I'm saying is, again, in addition to that, the subject matter tonight is to get us to start changing our language because that's part of fixing it, are we clear? And the question is vital, is very important, etc. Why? Because even in the process of trying to fix these things, right? People who are sincerely working to fix these things are still in the trap of colorable jurisdictions. 
What you must do is make those distinctions while you're working these problems out and cognitively at all times make that distinction so you can measure even your progress and the people's competence in setting up or restoring restoring the principles of international trade and commerce that superseded hybrid European colonial operations, particularly of the Western Hemisphere after 1492, et cetera, under the Spanish Inquisition operations against the Moors, which again is why we're dealing with this color of law operations. And people have lost cognizance of jurisdictional platforms and what jurisdiction means and the limitations of jurisdictions. And thus in the process, have been constantly tricked into signing things, affirming things, allowing what you call appearances of voluntary jurisdiction, thereby consenting to false jurisdictions and thus fiat platforms and fiat instrumentality and getting robbed in the process, which is back to what we're talking about and what we're dealing with now, including the, ant the, the question about the banking. You're talking about jurisdictions. And so as we clear these matters up and as we get these people to start studying these details, even children, younger children, will start working out problems just by understanding the different levels and aspects of jurisdiction, jurisdiction and logically, which comes under jurisprudence. Questions. And again, they'll understand why Drew Ali set up the Moorish Temple of Science as a civic organization, 1925, 6, 7, 8. And as you can see, that last tail end, that's when they really amped up the infiltration and the uh, operations to overthrow Noble Drew Ali and the Moorish move, Divine National Movement. This is called the period of the great sellout that people get uncomfortable talking about. However, what you find is that the civic platform of the movement, which deals with jurisdiction, was infiltrated and overthrown. And that's an honest, true fact. And it needs to be looked at, not with finding fault with people, just need to look at the facts and let the facts speak for themselves. And you also have jurisdictional facts. You need to understand jurisdictional facts. Let me bring that to you okay. from a point of law. Jurisdictional facts. Jurisdictional facts are those matters of fact which must exist before a court can properly take jurisdiction of the particular of the defendant, etc., has been properly served with process and that the amount in controversy exceeds a certain sum that the parties, which logically must be identified, and or the citizens of different states, etc., and that also the of jurisdictions must be addressed and affirmed for the record. So that's jurisdictional facts. So now when you're talking about the old Canaanite temple, then you're talking about the Moorish Temple of Science, also known as the Moorish Holy Temple of Science. Then you talk about the corporate name, which was adopted in 1928, known as the Moorish Science Temple of America. You're talking about adjustments of a constructed political jurisdiction in civics and in philosophical dispensation known as religion, etc., in different aspects of time and jurisdictional activity, etc., determining exercises of powers and authority, which would be demonstrated in Act One of the Divine Constitution and Law, Bylaws of the Moore Science Temple, which says the chairman, moderator, and chairman are put in power to make law, right, and enforce law. If he lives to, according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, and it is known before the members of the Moorish Science Temple of America, that is what? A political jurisdiction. And that's a civic act. So 
jurisdiction must be comprehended, mustn't it? Yes. So now we're still going back to even the question relative to Noble Drawley helping to uplift the Moorish Americans. That's a political act under civics and jurisdiction at the same time. And when you're talking nationality and birthrights, now you're talking about estate jurisdictions. Now that's a fact. How many of these people understand the state law and understand now you're getting into trusts? That's not opinion, that's fact. And I can't emphasize enough, Dr. Nayola, why I brought this subject matter up because I was thinking and I'm looking at all the politics going on and I'm looking at our people arguing Donald Trump and Joe, Joe Biden, Biden not knowing that while their activities affect us, it affects us because we're under occupation. But from the fact perspective, their activities in within their internal politics is the activities of a foreign private corporate operation that has not a damn thing to do with us. But yet it I, it, it affects us because we're in it, yes. false jurisdictions. We're not we're not it, it's like this. Then we go into voluntary jurisdiction, consent. Yes. Now why are people consent how many of our people are filling out sentences right now and don't know that they've created a jurisdiction and revived a false foreign jurisdiction that actually has been robbing them and abusing them of which they are lawfully not a part but they have agreed to be legally a part now they've perpetrated injury on themselves and don't even know what they've just done and they, they will come to you i and, no what i'm saying yeah. they will come to you and tell you or in my case my son was visiting at the door mm -hmm. mom this lady's here about this i said i'm not i don't want to talk to her she's like well i have this paper i want to leave it has her information and i never went to the door and he doesn't live there and he handed me a piece of paper with numbers on it i said that's not me of course it's not it's a stock number now guess what happened when you sign it you agree to be their stock I now they could, no i'm just saying i'm just talking to people in general who don't understand jurisdiction that that's a political jurisdiction offering and it's a political jurisdiction that you don't belong to right but when you sign and agree you just gave them leave against your estate, not as a living man or woman, but as a stock option so they can refund their bankrupt corporation. Which means people who claim to be conscious who even entertain it. Some are as, saying, oh, well, I put on there, I scratched out and I put more. Uh, sure, you can do that, but at the same time, it has nothing to do with you. Now you just made it have something to do with you. So now what happens is you just gave it jurisdiction. Do you understand what's in, in other words, the fact that people that people can't think deep enough, and it's not really deep, that it doesn't deal with them, it doesn't, it doesn't apply to them. You 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 have to know jurisdictionally when something is presented to you that doesn't apply to you. You don't conditionally sign it. You don't deal with it. All right, look, let's give it an example. As an example, recently, some of you have heard uh, Donald J. Trump make statements about this corporate entity in China called Huawei, right? And about technology transfers that are less than uh in their position honorable right mm -hmm. now let's look at this does the owners of huawei right the owners of that corporation make a form to do a census on their stock and then take it to russia and tell russian people to sign it and would a person from russia talk about signing them themselves over to back up huawei stock <laughs> that's no different than when the united states sends a census among these people of the land etc and ask them to sign it exact same thing 
which means the people don't understand that that's a private operations or private foreign corporate activity for human trafficking stock because they're bankrupt and they need new stock derivatives to sell to the world who already resisting buying them anyway. But here we go to bonds, but they keep talking about bondage and don't know what bonds are. Do you see the problem? Mm -hmm. We're back to jurisdiction. We're still dealing with jurisdiction. And, all, and, and what I'm saying, uh, uh, Dr. Nayel, is this is that as we converse these things, these things, if, if people comprehend jurisdiction, they would recognize it themselves without us having to discuss it. Do, do you understand? Meaning that um, you, you recognize Happy the Clown even though he's changed the colors of his uniform. Well, I think, it, and somebody mentioned, I saw it, I, I missed it, but someone said that they promote like the senses and so forth on mm -hmm. these urban radio stations and of course they're going to they use do. venues that they know now, we listen to. let's look at this let's look at this let's back to this up let's break this down dr Nayla. the urban radio stations owned by who foreign, foreign corporate government. operatives of the roman curia of the united states corporation company franchised licensed but the implication is that they have some kind of sovereign independence. That was the implication, isn't it? <laughs> they still don't understand jurisdiction. You see the problem? Oh, yeah. So we're trying to get people not to go pro or con, but to examine what they themselves are saying. Examine when people are coming to you who they are, where they derive their authority, what's their nationality, if they have an entity operation that they're presenting to you knowing factually that the entity corporate LLC uh, operation takes on the nationality of its creator. Therefore, nationality comes into play again. Now you're talking about jurisdiction again. It becomes very evident. It should be evident when you see, when you see the, the narrative, the mainstream narrative is very, you know, there's somebody, they're talking about solidarity here amongst the Moors. Well, you see the solidarity uh, with the media, the so-called entertainment industry, the so-called medical industry, the ones that are still... Now, let's others. look at why and, is solidarity. What? Now, let's trace And it. why we can't be... No, 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 no. Let's, let, let, let's, let's start let's, with them. Okay. Let's start to identify the solidarity that you're talking about. The impl implication on the surface seems to be what you would call agreed organized activity. What you need to recognize is that these are corporate entity platforms that belong to a group body of foreign, alien, hybrid European people. They are a controlled venue. That's their unity, not morality, not bloodline, not pedigree, but human trafficking operations that are all controlled by a conglomerate board of directors. But people keep thinking these entities are sovereign activities of people who may participate in them. When the people are stuck by agreeing to even entertain these things. Do I make a point on that or do I need to go further? No, no. I mean, I, I always characterize it as the octopus, you know, the head of the octopus is the the, the so-called that BS. would be you can you can look at it no the head of the octopus would be in fact by corporate construct the pope of rome and the bishop of rome the arms the, the the first parts of the arms of the octopus in in that allegory would be the queen of england um and what they refer to as the royal families or the uh, elite 13 families. bloodlines yes and then the, the stinging tentacles would be known as the industrial, the congressional industrial military complex known as the arm of enforcement for the United States Corporation Company, known as the U.S. platform for invasion of the sovereign rights of nation states going to and fro the earth 
devouring nations and occupying from a land of people already politically devoured, now known as persons of color, Negro, black, and colored, and Indians who are really the same people who don't know their pedigree and their bloodline. And when we go back to the earlier statement, why can't we as a people? Well, guess what? The people, if they're going to be what? Bonded in unity must honor their mothers and fathers. Who are they? They are Moors. Who do they agree to be? Colored people, which takes them off the platform of international law, treaty protections, and securities. It, is that complex? It's not. But the concept of jurisdiction is not clear with them. Are we clear? You know, even a lot of times when people talk about name and nationality, what they don't explain to the people if it are and is jurisdictions. And so therefore people look at it as an opinion, but whenever they're challenged, as example, somebody comes, steps on their steps and has a census for the United States Corporation Company, they start signing things, don't even know they're dealing with foreign persons claiming to be Americans and their agreement is a sanction for their estates to back bonds that back the bankrupt United States Corporation Company, which is owned by foreign alien Europeans, foreign agents who actually have made the people stock and that has been backing them up economically around the world and they call it floating bonds. And these people don't know, as soon as they start sanctioning the, the census, they will agree to relinquish their estate again, not that it hasn't already been hypothecated. Assumed, that's called, now that's called assumed jurisdiction. And so when they agree to be people of color, assumed jurisdiction is automatic. They claim to be black people, assumed jurisdiction is automatic. When they claim a nationality, immediately you have, by international law rights, an injection of averment of jurisdiction and adverse claim automatically by law and thus under quo warranto, warranto jurisdiction must be proven for the fact before any activity takes place so how are they going to have a census for human stock under the guise of a census and these people keep signing these things and not even understanding jurisdiction they're self-violating now it's called voluntary jurisdiction does therefore consent so what they're doing is they're perpetuating against themselves the very problems politically and economically they're trying to solve. This is a shout out from Brother Michael Wesley Lawrence Tunica L. Bay. He said, out of all my travels over many years to free myself was not made clear until I reached the house of real wicked and minds and spent that quality time with Taj. I oh, appreciate it. And I <laughs> hope we did some good. Yeah. Because then you can understand, even like when you know those Moors who understand our jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about honor honesty confederation, white, wakata, the duke the manya. When we talk about the, the fake sale of Little Spain that they call Louisiana Territory, when we look at the Nana Coke in this area and the Renapi in the area of Shakamaxim and our different confederations, knowing that we're all the same people and territorial federations, etc., we're understanding what even political jurisdictions among ourselves. But then we deal with what you call a national jurisdiction, and that's nationality. And that's where the unity comes in. And then in harmony with the ancient traditions and customs of our ancient mothers and fathers, we also know that the land can't be sold. So any claims of these foreign alien Europeans buying our land for a string of beads is B. Eskidor because they can't sell it in the first place. So now we're understanding jurisdiction again, and our people need to understand these things. Here's another comment, a question. Islam Grand Sheikh Brother Tashari Bay, the same way we have evidence 
of Prophet Noble Juali adopting as a corporate name Moorish Science Temple of America through a religious affidavit of David of organization. Do we, do you slash we have evidence of the Moorish divine and national movement of the world being founded by the Prophet Noble Juali? Can you direct us to Now, that? this is why when you study uh, the history of Noble Dwali's activity, then you start finding about Drew Sali and others. There's others who also work with him to uh, to reestablish. Because you got to remember, is that another? Yes, D R U. D R U. Oh, Drew. Yeah. Drew's, okay. Yeah. Now, um, now the deal of it is because people uh, usually uh, 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 do not what you call uh, in any beyond surface study. They're not aware that these are political jurisdictions that were created. Do you understand? But the political jurisdictions are addressing jurisdictions that already exist. In other words, a jurisdictional operation created to dispense information to make people aware of a political jurisdiction that already exists before they were daggone born. That's the Morris Divine National Movement. So you know, you understand that jurisdiction. So then you understand. Then you understand the theft of the of the estates of the Moors. And the infiltration of the of the divine national movement of uh, via J. Edgar Hoover and the FBI, which they tell you them their their own writings are closer to you. And then Drew Ali had to adopt a religious affidavit in order to 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 maintain a trust to protect the property because the people were in the process of learning. They didn't even understand what this is all about. They knew he was right in the, the spirit of things, but intellectually. They, were, they didn't have a civic background. People were coming from all walks of life, church. from the church, mosques, synagogues, uh, atheists, uh, different nation states, and finding out the truth of the bloodline, the truth of the real history here, who's who, learning that these foreign Europeans were actually descendants of invaders. They're not Americans. They were claiming your birthright to claim your estate. So he created a, a, a not only a political jurisdiction, he was forced politically, politically to make jurisdictional changes in order to preserve the integrity of the movement, which is why the religious affidavit was adopted, not 1913, 1928. Duh. You see, here we go, jurisdiction, isn't it, aren't we? Now, when I present that from that perspective, People can remove the emotions and just simply look at the law processes and the legal processes, then look at the history and look at the motivations by political necessity of different things that were done and recognize that some of those things were actually political compromissions by necessity, but because the people were not competent. Where was their protection as they were learning? Now you're getting back into trust law, don't you? Now you understand why Juali set up a trust and nobody, you, you'll see people mention it and not go into discipline, science of civics and teach specifically about the trust. You'll see a lot of Moors talk about the trust, right? Ask them about the detail of the trust and you'll see a whole bunch of conversations, a bunch of opinions and who got it and where it is and what, and, and, and they're not even clear. Why? Because they have not been taught civics and made what jurisdictional distinctions because it should be common knowledge just like you're looking meaning that like this as an example you can study people from all many different organizations many which broke off from the moorish movement because of infiltration including the nation or the temple of islam which later became the nation of islam which still is a branch of the moorish movement and when you dig into the history you'll find that these are still what Political jurisdictions, aren't they? Aren't they? Mm -hmm. They're related and they have a history together, but they're also separate, aren't they? Aren't they? Yes. But if people know the politics of how these things evolve, they look at them as the people as being separate people as opposed to looking at the jurisdictions that they were created, but due to the politics being political jurisdictions, but not uh, all the people actually being separate from nationality. You see the point? And when people don't know that, then they get they start identifying themselves by their in, by the entities and not by their pedigree bloodlines. So now we're talking jurisdiction. See why it must be refined, Dr. Nayo? Mm -hmm. Because it's easy for people who don't understand jurisdiction to get confused 
and thus divided. You see the whole point? Because they don't know the difference between person, person, corporate entity, and people, the physical being. Because they've been trained that they're the same thing. They'll say every person must do this. They don't know that their lawful process or the legal process is saying the corporation must do this, that, or the other. And then they agree to things that they shouldn't even be talking about. Well, every person should sign to the, the corporate census. Never dawns on the show it to me in a treaty and the Constitution did it. <laughs> yeah. Do you see the point? Jurisdiction. And logically, in relationship to what I just said, persons who are in leadership position who know these things should and basically give the people the basics so that people can make what? Competent, rational decisions in all that they do, socially, politically, and economically. And thus, by virtue of those activities, demonstrate their social, political, economic, and spiritual alliances, which is also a jurisdiction, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Let me take a second. I want to see. There are some questions I'm just not going to get into. Someone mentioned that they are, you know, telling the people with regard to the census that it funds the programs that help the community. Of course, that's the point. Of course. Now let's look at this. Let's 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 address that because that's an issue, right? Because it's a jurisdictional issue. Now, for the record, uh, um, for someone who present that as an argument to, particularly to our people, right? Show the record where such funds have been coming to your community outside of them gentrifying your community. Show the record where they've been benefiting. In the past, show the record where all uh, the commercial mercenaries had ceased and desist murdering them on the street. Show the record where the, the commercial mercenaries were not invading people's houses and shooting old women and women and children uh, in their homes uh, under the guise of law and authority, which they didn't have. And then they talk, and, and then talk about the history of these censuses that they've been signing and show where it's been benefiting our so-called neighborhoods and show where it has what ungentrified, degentrified neighborhoods that our people have a history of suffering from. Now we're back to jurisdiction, aren't we? Because it's still jurisdiction, isn't it? You notice how they always, you always, you notice how they talk about, oh, you're going to get some funds. Mm -hmm. You know what you're going to do, they're going to steal some funds from you. See, Robert G says, asked if you will go in on the correlation of the fall of the Red House to the modern day jurisdictions in the U.S. court. Basis of the politics. And what it is, it is the false colorable jurisdiction known as commonly around the world today, the U.S. democracy. That's also a jurisdiction that evolved in the political platforms of the world after the fall of the Red House. 1492, including their celebration of the fall called January the 1st. And it ain't a calendar year. It is a political jurisdiction created in relationship to the fall. And as a matter of fact, they used to do it in what they call blackface. And this past year, they did it again as a symbol. And that is what? A political jurisdiction. But it ain't what most people think it is. <laughs> and they assemble at Six and Moore Street at Philadelphia. Everything they do is simple, done to They simple. tell you the truth. Do the people understand jurisdiction? Do you you, you see the point? Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, they say that mum's the word. Mm -hmm. It's called mummer's free. Okay, here's a question. Islam Grand Sheik, what is the so called civil? Defense Force as opposed to the U.S. Armed Forces, forgive me please, but how do they both compare to the National Guard? 
Well, the National Guard is essentially implying more of a legitimate uh, platform coming from the uh, militias uh, that are basically constitutional. Um, uh, most of these other venues are um, platforms created by the, the board of directors of the um, platform of the Knights of Columbus Ku Klux Klan oath under um, the Defense Department or Department of Defense, which is actually uh, under the thumb of the operatives of the Circle Church and the Chantry, and their operations have been more or less futile under a color of law and not under Constitution, Republic, or of treaties. Now, that's the fact. However, you'll notice that the uh, so-called National Guard still comprises mostly of uh, individuals of the foreign corporate entity and not of the nationals of the land. So therefore, they're for, uh, in their nature of operations de facto too. Question, uh, well, I'll leave that. Let me just see if somebody else has something else to say. Before I go there. Uh, there okay. Here's one comment. Nadine Figueroa Bay says, folks are afraid to enforce the treaties under the threat under threatened arrest, which Good. is a violation, Let's stop right there. which which yeah. is a violation of their constitution and U.S. codes. All right. So now, the fact that that statement is even made and it's valid is proof that the persons that have been claimed to be government are what waging war on the people. Since when are the people afraid of a government that is theirs? Why are they afraid? Because they know that these people are de facto. Now you're talking jurisdiction again. So why don't they talk about the jurisdictional issue? They're admitting a fear. Why? Because they know that they're under attack. Now what we need to do is get the people started admitting it and now start addressing constitutions and treaties. And then we're doing what? What is according to constitutions and treaties? When the people fear the government, you already know that the government is de facto. The rule in treaty and constitution for such persons is called malfeasance and it's called misprision of treason and the penalty for treason is death. Not to you, the people, but to them. Where's the rules? Oh, and the guillotines. Oh, I know what I was going to ask you. There are some that's being said that what we're headed towards or what the the deep state really wants to do is to decimate the u.s corporation on operating at north america to the, bring in bring in control of the united nations let's back up now i i i, I kind of sense where the statement is going but they need to understand it's the state is the u.s right the u.s yeah. but they no, want they're not hold on the statement that I'm hearing is that the deep state wants to decimate the U.S. corporation. The deep state is the their US operations and here to bring in a different. You, you no, know, you've talked know, about. Yeah. Let's back up again. All right. Because I think it's being missed. It's me. It's me asking you this the, question. The U.S. corporation and the deep state are one and the same. True. True. But they They're, bankrupted themselves yeah. before, have they not? I'm just asking. Okay. We got to be clear parties okay jurisdictions all right the deep state which is another name for the contracting corporations that are members of the roman curia okay that is comprised as styled as the u.s democracy is responsible for over the party members are responsible for overthrowing the republic, the republic. legitimate platform the u.s the U.S. democracy is not a legitimate political sure. platform. It is the deep state. Why are they moving towards bringing, giving you because the UN is also the deep, the state. deep state? That's what I'm trying to get to. Under different now, this what now we're talking jurisdictions because the people on the surface think these are different political jurisdictions because of the names. True, that's what I'm and sure. this is why it's important 
It's an excuse because that's what they want to bring in the United Nations because that is the open warfare to finally use under war powers to take the people's defense from them, i.e. to do what they've been tending to do all the time is to do what? Abridge the Second Amendment to the Constitution for the United States, disarm the people and enslave them, having no regress, doing to them what they've already done to the people of the land. You see the point? Mm -hmm. They're completing, they're exercising what you call stage completions of the existence of the agenda of the Unum Sanctum operations, which is what is the politics. The That's fault, their end game. That is the end game. But the people must understand that the U.S. is not legitimate. The U.S. is the yes. deep state. Yes. See, that's not the. But it, you know, when they say, "Well, the U, well, the deep state is trying to overthrow the U.S. democracy." The U.S. democracy is the deep state. The U.N. is the deep state. The U.N. is the the, the U.S. democracy. See. So what they're trying to do, like you said, is to bring in. Another phase of their already planned it's out. It's a phase agenda. of the ongoing war that didn't end. You know, you know how when we tell people one of the once you start studying jurisdictions and you start studying chronology of activities after the fall of the Red House, you will see different periods of times the hybrid Europeans will change the names of the corporate entities, but the activities are the same. This is to throw people off of what's going on. To, as an example, you know when, as an example, when the, uh, uh, Anna Von Reese act as the uh, a private attorney for Pope Francis, and after Pope Francis uh, uh, called people from around the world, leaders, so-called religious and political leaders from around the world, and they promised to stop the act, stop the activities of the doctrine of discovery. How many people knew that what they were calling racism all these years was the activity of the doctrine of discovery? And it still hasn't dawned on them that that's what they're talking about. And that all of this is the operations of, that took place since 1492 in the fall of the Red House. That's the foundation of the politics. But how many people recognize the jurisdiction to put that together? And it's not complex. But yet they would talk about these things as different subject matter and as if it didn't apply today. Let me ask you this. Since all of this, all these oper op operations are de facto at best, a lot of distractions take place to have, you know, there's always a sleight of hand going on with them, a distraction over here, and then the very next day or the same day something is yeah, going, go. some kind of something being legislated right. and so forth. Yes. How do we, even though we and know these, so, these power trickings are. All right, now that you're talking about the distractions, relative to the politics let me answer this question okay I'll, I'll start answering the question like this with the distractions <laughs> and that's one of the main ones because people aren't paying attention to jurisdiction and that's one of the things to get you not to pay attention to what's really going on without even saying it mm -hmm. But a lot of legislation goes through, and I know you know when I used to. And the legislation of it's colored is not is not law. Right. This so one must. We be. don't even we don't even read these things when they're in their beginning states. We don't look at this exactly. stuff. We don't we don't we don't read. Exactly. We don't oppose anything. And exactly. by the time we are up there marching in France, because it's already. Passed. And then they're going. Then they're going to go around and discuss how how to. Un yeah, it was they're going to sign the census. It was do you do you see? We're back to that even. Do you see the point yes. that I'm saying to you, Dr. Naylor? Yes. Now, and, and yet, if you say to many of these people who matter these issues, if they're talking about the census as an example, say, uh, tell me about all the jurisdictional matters concerning the census and watch them get persimmon lips. As if your question is not related to what, what they're talking about. And it's absolutely encompassing it. Absolutely. And the questions that evolve from all these things go back to the jurisdictional issue. But I'm presenting it to show you and to, to, to demonstrate to you that people who should be addressing these things are actually enmities to the people, people you've trusted, not just the hybrid Europeans. 
Because to resolve these problems, you're going to have to talk about what's really going on. You, you can't continue to address these things from emotional belief positions. You must be specific of what's going on. And you're talking about the multiple levels of jurisdiction. That's a fact. Failure to address them is an abdication of rights and liberties, which is what's been happening to you, us, collectively. Yeah, there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of things. Well, that's why on. they're allowed to go on, meaning that this is what's been happening, Dr. Naylor. The neglect that has been going on for all these generations has hit what you call an apex. So now the results of the seeds planted can no longer be ignored. And then people, the problem is people are still trying to argue them from the emotional perspective and not what is really going on, which is a collage of crossed, crossed jurisdictional issues, quote unquote, crossed jurisdictional issues. Where is what the problem is? They're talking about racism, viruses and everything else which is not the issue. It doesn't mean these aren't issues. That's not what's going on. And, and what's happening is they keep abdicating their rights of claim by getting diverted into arguments that are not relative to root cause. Many like, like now, if, I, if we start today, start, now let's talk about whether or not cold virus exists. Sure, cold virus exists. Well, why are you arguing that? They always exist, and they're going to continue to exist. That, is, that statement that I just made right now is no different than someone saying whether coronavirus exists or not. Logically, it does. Now, what it is, whether it's been mutated, what's going on, that's a whole different venue that you're also being diverted from on the, on the premise of you know, the virus really exists. Yeah, well, well, you know, it's like saying, you know, elephants are really mostly gray. <laughs> Who among you saying that they're not? And everybody, and everybody starts arguing different versions of elephants. Meanwhile, they're still in your states and waging wars. And let me tell you again, how about some of you who are going to discover that uh, this is to some of you who, who have what you call social security payments, um, veterans, uh, so-called checks, um, retirement funds, pension funds, you're going to, and we, we've been telling you all the time, and some of you who are listening here tonight, whether you're in the UK, whether you're in Canada, any part of North America, and any different venues that listen to the House of We Awakening Minds, I don't even have to ask you because I already knew it was going to happen. And many of you who will deny it can't deny it. Your checks are late. And some of you didn't get them on time. And it's been happening for the last couple of months more recently, evidentially. Now tell me, text that in and tell me that that's not true. And we've been telling you. And guess what? They're sitting around arguing about whether a virus exists or not to distract them from the fact that these people who you've been calling falsely, your government, have robbed you and blamed China for it, robbed you and blamed Russia for it, and still distracting you, blaming everyone else when really what we told you four or five years ago that the trade windows would freeze up and that the credit windows of the world would freeze up and that's what you're experiencing and you can call corona and you can call whatever you want to call it you can keep pretending you don't understand the jurisdiction but guess what you're going to start sticking your card in some atm machines and they're going to get a cold and cough and your card ain't coming back or you were they gonna cough it i said they won't cough the digits off they're going to call, call the digits off your card. <laughs> Put it in, in, in the ATM and go, <coughs> burp, and you pull the card back out and it'll be blank. And stick it back in and, and you're going to get zero accounts. And not only that, some of you others who um, we've told you a couple, uh, uh, we've told you this in the last uh, year and a half, 
again some of you people with multiple zero accounts have found your account go all the way down to zero and they're controlling your complaints from getting in the mainstream news and you have no venues to complain because you could tell the public what's been happening to some of you who technically uh, were somewhat wealthy and discovered that your accounts went from six zeros to zero zero it's not even accounting some of the little uh snafus oh monday the computers uh see this this asteroid <coughs> is coming near the earth and stuff like that <coughs> and it made the tides come up <coughs> and then they had the computers had a glitch on it and i didn't get my social security check and 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 then i fell back a little bit more but see what they're doing they're making sure that they can't evict me and that's how you all talk and you ain't paying attention to jurisdictional issues and that you're being diverted because what's happening to you now is getting ready to to increase and guess what a lot of these questions that people are are projecting they're not going to be talking about questions they're going to be talking about where's the nearest person who i thought was government we have a rope for them and a guillotine why are you telling me you should have done that generations ago and what has happened you let this bs go on for so many generations and now you're starting feeling the fruits of your labor you're now starting to reap what you have sown i say this to you as i've said it before don't accept what type you guys saying prove me a liar now it doesn't matter anymore for me to try to convince you all of anything because now rome is showing you openly that they are your enemy and if you don't accept that that's on you and you keep jumping in their jurisdiction what you don't do is make a pact with the devil because guess what they don't honor they honor no contracts they honor no constitutions they honor no treaties they are absolutely and positively rogue and de facto have fun i, I was listening to um lizette zhang today and she was talking about the fact that what i'm not sure exactly what happened but it happened on the 29th of august the day after we were distracted by jasmine yeah both chadwick boseman's um transition after the um sacrifice right well, well the day but, after yeah the very yeah. day after there was something major that happened with this financial collapse and they've been covering it up but what she talked about is coming up is that they're basically moving us very very quickly to of course the digital society and what they're going to do is what they had hoped with the 1200 dollars stimulus checks is that people will run out and buy stuff to stimulate the economy but a lot of people held on to this believe it or not held on to the 1200 so now what they're moving by before january 21st i don't know what the significance of that they want to have it so that we're at a digital they moved it the currency is digital and that if you don't say expend it in a certain period of time it's going to start it like voice. it's going to be they, all exactly. the way down they can take it from so whatever which to means, what have we been telling people for years the digital system is being set up so they can steal from you easier than they did before with the physical fiat right. and the people still don't understand that those are jurisdictions yep. meaning that europe and this was been happening people and this is not just people who who, who would consider what you call economically poor people who've had businesses etc who say last month may have an account with six digits in it discover that your account is down to four digits and they have no outlet for communication to argue or to publicly inform the people that's what's happening to them is going to be happening to a lot of people as soon as they go there guess what happens immediately it's already in place the same way they're going to steal their their energy output through the digital 
they also use that same digital platform to do what? Sometimes, what, what, what's been happening over the last year or so when we started talking controversial issues, Dr. Nayela, right in the midst of your conversation, brrr, sh- 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 same thing. That's what you're going to do to your digital cards, mm-hmm. y'all. And now you're talking what? A digital jurisdiction, which was a plan to get you off the fiat so they can rob you quicker. Not that the fiat wasn't fiat. Yes, it's fiat. But digital is what? Imagination. It's easier to steal an abstract than to steal physical, even though the physical itself comes under the private commercial paper of fraud. Let's look at this. How many people, you know, like how many people, just like when you're working or doing something, can go past a junkyard and you'll see people with trucks, cars, etc., going to the junkyard with old vases and stuff that's silver plated and stuff like that. And you'll see people going there with copper pipes that's plumbers all day long, buy and sell. And then they're telling you that there's a coinage shortage. And all of a sudden they've been running the, the press of the private commercial operatives of the Jesuit order 24 seven, running the press all over this, over this land and then they tell you that there's a, a money shortage or coinage shortage of course there's money shortage because they've been stealing your gold and silver for the people um but we're talking about the fiat um notes etc and all and and it's been so common you can walk down the street if you paid attention before you get to the next block you can pick up five or six cents and pennies etc but then there's a coinage shortage and you got all this metal, all these junkyards. You don't think that in 1943, they weren't uh, uh, pressing coins out of zinc and lead, et cetera. So let's, let's get off that. Coinage means a pressed, a metal pressed, whether it is valuable or not, that's secondary. And so the deal of it is the fact that they're creating another false jurisdiction and people are what? Falling for it. They're seeing it in their faces and they're falling for it. How much trash do you see that, that you put out every day that's recyclable? Rags, clothes, uh, paper, et cetera. You know, you, you're getting tired of the paper and stuff. You know, small households produce more trash in a few days than we used to produce in a week or a month, say in the 50s or something like that. Now, and so what are the Federal Reserve notes made of? trash paper and rags hmm. that's what they're made of wow. now how's that scarce uh, yeah. how many hershey wrappers do people eat and bubble don't throw that on the ground you know it's every day all this is paper with rag for reinforcement fiber with ink on it and people act like it's money. It's not money, but they're they're acting. They're falling for the narrative that it's scarce. You see, in some places now they're saying, "Um, there's a coin shortage. We have a shortage of coin. Never had them before. People are trying to get rid of the change. You know, please stop. It's BS. However, you know, it's like this. They're creating what a new false jurisdiction so they can rob the people better and complete their cycle." of unum sanctum operations to deal, to steal the people economic, from the people economically, to enforce Rex 84, King Alpha Plan, Executive Order, Executive Order 11490, Technical Manual, Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. It's documented what they're going to do to you. They didn't even hide it. But how many people never even read it? And we're talking about what's exposed. We're not even talking about what's hidden. You know, so deal with it. That's what I have to say about that. Now, the people can act like they still, they can keep on pretending that jurisdiction is not the issue. And guess what happens? That's how we got to where we are right now. Except, unlike most of the people I've gotten used to, they're not going to return to things as they were usual. They intend to break the people's back. It's time. Not that we need to go back to what was. It's not that. 
we need to go back to treaty and constitution principles really mm-hmm. and the, so what did they come from one form of fiat to a what a more controllable form of fiat and training the people like rats to call it money they don't know that it's not money and currency is not money you know uh, and they keep speak using it in the same venue now they've created another false jurisdiction and this is back to our earlier conversation if we don't correct that with our people consider the loss so the best thing we can do and this is what i say to you and i'll say this over and over again do your best and lead the rest try to get information out there as clean as possible and save some of the youth because most of the people in what is called the adult population will be exterminated economically and politically they will be broken and when they resist they're going to be camped and chipped now that's not a threat from me that's the fact and these people keep pretending they don't get this don't understand this and they keep looking for oh they're going to vote for somebody that's that's going to fix what the other party broke and they've been doing this for generation after generation after generation that trading places to rob the people promises them a chicken a peanut butter sandwich and a hershey bar and these people keep voting for them not even knowing that the vote doesn't even count on a platform of decisions for the people it is a sanction for you to become a new stock option for them these very same people that you think you're voting to represent you no what you're doing is agreeing to represent their stock derivative options that went bust the only caveat to that to your advantage is not what you've done but the fact that the nations of the world aren't buying them treasury bonds anymore even against your own interest against yourself and now you can't even control what you thought you wasn't controlling in the first place but that you thought you were compromising selling yourself out you can't even sell yourself out anymore because the nations ain't buying those t bonds so the credit windows of the world froze so now they're trying to do a digital to rob the rest of what you got so you can't resist and come at them with guillotines and ropes which you should have done back when george washington and 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 when thomas jefferson told you about these operatives of the corporations he says says any of these politicians that stay in office and make a career out of the office if you're wise if you are wise you will go in them offices drag them out line them against the fence and shoot them that's those so-called founding followers these people keep talking about not some radicals they told you and they warned you you didn't do it because you was busy enslaving us the people of the land and promoting the brands under the 14th amendment now you found out that they're what sacrificing you too however it still ain't your estate so now you see donald trump joe biden all the rest of the members of the kite close ku klux klan operations of the jesuit order fighting over an estate that don't belong to them because none of them are americans have fun because it's getting ready to get hotter and we ain't talking about that comment either but the comment is bigger than jupiter and shit and yeah when it comes past the earth even though it's a couple million miles the wake of his tail is really going to raise swell <laughs> yeah right diversion again you know we had a flood over there across the street and stuff park you know we had two storms at the same time park did you been distracted or whatever they call it now you're being distracted i'm not saying these things ain't happening these things they're attacking you these people don't get that these people that they keep claiming is their government is waging war on the people They're waging war on the people. They better understand jurisdiction and try to save the little bit they got. In conclusion. In conclusion. <laughs> In conclusion, you got six minutes, Dougie Fresh. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. 
Say to make the press, you won't. You won't. You're <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah. Well, I want to thank you for enlightening me about the silver because I heard you for years. Yeah. I heard you say for years y'all need to get silver, and I kept thinking mm -hmm. while you can. Why? Why you can't? Because yeah. that could, it, you know, when they when I I understand back when the gold thing changed years ago, they were they made it un. un, un illegal to have any gold coins that were were made after 1933. Now, let's look at this. And they On well, what foundation of law was that decree made? What treaty sanctioned that? What constitution sanctioned that? I have no idea. It's a rogue action. It is an act of treason. You see the pro you see where we are today? They created false jurisdiction after false jurisdiction and exercised jurisdictional powers on territorial jurisdiction, all of which and none of which they possessed. They are enemies, foreign and domestic, and have not been treated accordingly by the people. Now the people are what? On the verge of losing all of their estates. And they're what? Calling the house of reawakening minds. What do we do? Uh, called reversion of a state. So you better study what that means because that's another jurisdictional claim. And we've been saying that one for the last 70 years or so. <laughs> Whatever. In other words, like this. If somebody keeps beating you up and stealing your pie, your mom bake your pie every week, and every week you, you you get a good whiff of them before you can get a bite, somebody beats you up and takes your pie every week. After a while, I tell your mom, say, Oh, you know them pumpkin pies that you make me mom every week and stuff. I, I never get a chance to taste them anyway. So why don't when we clean up the lawn after we start walking Fido and then you make these pies because they're gonna take them anyway. And after a while, they'll stop taking the pies because they won't be that tasty. Plus, they'll stink. <laughs> just, just like that. Somebody keep taking your sandwich, start making the. Now they say, you got good sandwiches. You go to lunch every time you go to lunch. The bully comes and beat you up, take your sandwiches. Start getting your mom make them nasty sandwiches. They'll stop taking your lunch. How's that, how's that translate into what we would be actually doing? That, that means if we start making adverse claims okay. and setting up trust, it starts putting a fence between you and the false operatives of the corporate state de facto operations because they're having difficulties even now floating bonds because people are nationalizing around the country, et cetera, the true country. And even though many of the concepts are wrong, the fact of them being active and not passive is interrupting the bond system. You'll never capture any of them. But what you can do, you understand, is you can put vinegar in, in, your, in your glass of water they keep stealing. And believe me, they're not gonna do the drink it down real quick, steal, steal your water again, go and gulp, gulp, gulp. You know, it's not gonna be tasty. It's like this, you make it on, they're stealing from you, make it uncomfortable for them. That's what I'm saying. How do you do make it uncomfortable? You, you learn fundamental trust law, start putting everything that allegedly is yours, which it is by moral yours, but legal process under the false jurisdiction of the rogue operatives called the United States Trading Service Company operatives, et cetera, and the Roman Curia, They've declared that you own nothing. They declared that they owned you and your soul, which is what they've been doing politically. It's not racism. It's called soul theft. They've been stealing your life. Now you can pretend that that's not what's been happening. And guess what? You will be uh, one of those ones that you say finally exterminated. But for those of you who want to save a little bit of what you have left, you're not going to be too good at gaining things because they're going they with their war machine, they're trying to make it as impossible as, 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 as they can. However, what you can do is not make it easy for them. So set up trust and start making adverse claims on all your property, et cetera, and stop signing their private human trafficking census, which sanctions them to make another bond against the name that you uh, think that you're calling yourself. The, the plus, like I said earlier, is because the nations aren't buying them anyway. So they can keep on making these bonds 
and no one's buying them. So that's why, again, why you have the feedback loop. Not because these people, just because these people are waking up and nationalizing, but also because the world are not buying them bonds anymore on those birth certificates, marriage certificates, and other feudal law instruments that were legislated under a color law by the rogue operative owners of the United States Service Corporation run by the Circle Church and the Chantry from Fleet Street, England, and the Queen of England, etc., answering to the Pope. The platform has collapsed. Translation, they don't want to trade with Babylon no more. They're going to let her stuff burn. And if you keep on holding on to it and not paying attention to true jurisdictions, you're going down with her. Come out, of her. Back. Come out of her. Listen, thank you so much, Grand Sheik. I know you have to go. Um, it's been three hours, but I just want to remind those that are yeah. listening of the upcoming 12-week contract law course um, that United Republic of Morocco is sponsoring. It's from September 19th, 2020 through December 12th, 2020. Um, it is a 12-week contract law course, which will provide the students with the knowledge of the divine source, which all contracts are formed before they are put in writing or expressed. Also, students will learn the uniform commercial codes dealing with securities, negotiable instruments, uh, let me see, real substance and entitlement rights. Furthermore, the students will be taught the basis of contract through treaties, trust, agreements, constitutions, and bylaws. It's going to be held every Saturday um, for 12 weeks. Um, there is a fee of 300 notes for the 12 week course. Uh, you can go to our House of Reawakening Minds Facebook page for the um, for information. The flyers there. You can um, contact. Sister Tamara L at 302-438-8970. You can cash app her for your payment at dollar sign yeah. Tamara. She said to say Tamara D L. Okay. But go to our Facebook page, uh, House of Reawakening Minds Facebook page if you want more information. I know many of you have already signed up, but that's coming up and it's in line with you know, jurisdiction. It you, is. You know, it is jurisdiction. It is jurisdiction. So we want to thank you so much, so much for tuning in to um, tonight. Um, Grand Sheik has been working very hard this week. He's very tired, and I want to get him off <laughs> and mm -hmm. so he can go and rest. Thank you so much for your support. Listen, I don't say this like I should, but press those likes, give us some thumbs up and likes. Uh, subscribe to our our page to House of Reawakening Minds um, YouTube page. Um, check me out on Tuesday nights for Office Hours with Dr. G every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, every other Sunday, Open Circle Gathering at 12 p.m. Eastern Time with my co-host, uh, Brother Amanero Jabril Bay. We just want you to know that we love you and we're doing everything we can to keep this platform uh, full of knowledge. Also, make sure on Thursday nights that you check out State of the Nationals with Sister Tamara L., which is on Blog Talk Radio. We are here for you. We love you. We appreciate you. Please, you know, support us, our Cash App, our PayPal. Um, give us some thumbs up. Give us some likes and send us some energetic love. We thank you. We appreciate you so very, very, very much. Until uh, next week, um, it will be Brother... Uh, Brothers Abdullah and Brother Shem will be here. Please tune in next week. But before that, I guess it will be me <laughs> on Tuesday. Um, and I have a guest that is scheduled who will be coming from Brazil. Last week, we were in. Uh, right. Last week, look, I'm going inter international. Mm -hmm. Last week was Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And um, next week, my guest will be from Brazil. So thank you so much. Until next time. <laughs> Peace. Peace.